Here we go. All right. Basic fantasy RPG. Temple of Tranquility. Because you don't remember my settings because you're a jerk. Okay, there we go. Go. Okay. Looks like we are live. So, welcome everybody to Chalice and Chains. My name is Sam. Today we are running some basic fantasy role-playing game right here, which is kind of quickly becoming my new favorite, um, definitely my new favorite OSR, if you want to call it that. Some people don't. Um, and uh, definitely my go-to for fantasy at this point. Simple, quick, and it's free. So if you want to check this out, basicfantasy.org. It's awesome. Check it out. And we're going to play today um, an adventure that I created called The Temple of Tranquility. And it's set in a series of games that I'm calling The Order of the Chalice, um, which essentially is there's this secretive order within the world, all over the world, um, that believes essentially that at one point, during the creation of the world, there was a magic chalice, whether that's a physical cup or something else, um, that was responsible for everlasting life, as well as um, healing of you know both bodily injuries and ailments and whatever. And over the years and the millennia, that chalice has been lost to humanity. And with it, most of those benefits, you know, humans are now mortal, most of the races are now mortal, and people die all the time of sickness and disease. And so this order has searched throughout the world for this chalice. They all they seek rumors and they will pay and fund expeditions when they believe that intelligence uh, is possible, that they might find something. And they have been very excited because they believe that they have some rumors that might be very promising. Um, some members of the order have received information from a pirate crew um, that they found a mysterious island out in the middle of the ocean. And the crew managed to make a map um, with the location to this island. They didn't spend a lot of time on the island because they found that it was extremely deadly. Um, the native population was incredibly deadly, but they were able to, at one point, when they stopped to take a drink of water, they found restorative properties in some of the water, as well as the plant life. Um, certain herbs on the, plant, on the, on the island um, would restore health. And so, Unfortunately, they weren't able to stay much longer because they were <laughs> kicked off the island, essentially, um, just, just by how dangerous it was. And it wasn't their intention to go there in the first place. But they made quite a pretty penny from the order. And now they have called you guys. They have said to you that you are to seek out this island and simply explore it. Find out if there are, is any truth to the rumor. If there is possibly the chalice and there was also what they put together that the pirates didn't know was that there was knowledge in an ancient tome um, hidden deep within the annals of the you know church libraries and even some of the you know magical establishments in the world that spoke of a temple of tranquility and this was one of the places that kind of feeds the myth of the the chalice um, whether it's a myth, the order doesn't believe it is, but, and so they, it, it, it was talked about this verdant place, this place that was hard to find, but that was teeming with life and that it was dangerous because any place like this would be, the temple is guarded by natural guardians. Um, but that those that are deemed worthy would find these healing waters and gain the benefits. And throughout history, those that had supposedly 
had gone on to be the kings and the rulers and, you know, the, the great warlords and conquerors of the world. And so you guys find yourselves on a ship three or four days out from port. Your captain has told you that based on the map that you've shared with him, it's probably only another day or two travel at most. But he's concerned because based on his, you know, sort of sailor knowledge, it looks like a storm is brewing. And so he basically tells you guys, he asks you guys, what do you want to do? If we are going to sail to this island, we will have to go through the storm. Or we could delay, but if we delay, we may run out of provisions and have to turn back. So when you guys say, no, we must press on, this is what our order has told us to do, he says, okay. And you press on through the storm. And it's one hell of a storm as you guys pass through. And I I don't know whether you would have ever been on ships or out at sea or not, but this is one of those things where... This is probably nothing that you've ever experienced, or if it has, it's on a level that you've just never encountered before. And the ship is just rocking back and forth. You feel sometimes as though it may capsize, lightning hitting all around you, buckets of rain coming down, making the deck slippery and and hard to see. And then, as if fate was telling you that you were not going to make this island very easily. Um, And because it's one of my favorite tropes, a giant wave crashes up over the deck. You can hear the splitting of the ship as it just gets ripped apart by by these waves and you plunge into the black depths. And as you take your breath knowing you're going to go into the water it's a good thing that you do because the the shocking cold of this water nearly causes you to pass out you all of a sudden are submerged you know and and you're just getting tossed about you can't tell which way is up and just as you feel like you're going to run out of air everything goes black And what I want everyone to do for me right now is roll a d6 and let me know what you get. I got a five. Okay, Aloy and Jose got a five. How do you get a one? Oh, you guys got fives? All right. Oh, poor Salazar yeah, I gotta, I gotta is, is the uh, the one to wake up last. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> okay. Um, Jose. Uh, yes, sorry, sir. Salazar. Uh, no, Valdar. Sorry. You awaken <laughs> on the beach and you feel this just this like vibrating underneath you 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 realize there's this coarse something on your on your on your face on your body you can't really see because it, but you can you can sense light and as you kind of pop your head up a little bit <coughs> and spit like sand out of your mouth you realize you're on a beach and you look up and you kind of look around and you see near you also starting to get up, your companion Eldrazar um, and your companion Cassius. Salazar, the thief, has been, as far as you can tell, knocked unconscious. Um, and all around you is the wreckage of this ship that you came in on. Some of the boxes and barrels and whatever are still intact, but for all intents and purposes, this ship is destroyed. But worse than that, you fu- you see this the the source of this vibration. You look kind of down the beach a little bit, and you can see a number of, of 
sort of hazy figures, but one in particular stands out. It's this ginormous crab, something, you know, way bigger than you would have ever seen before, these big pincers, and it's coming towards you, potentially curious about who you are and maybe a source of food. So what are you going to do? All right. He, uh, so Val, Valdar first uh, make, tries to make sure he has his, at least his shield ready and tries to rouse his companions. Absolutely. And you're able to do so. Um, I would say, you know, Eldrazar and Cassius, you're both waking up at the same time, and perhaps you come into sharp consciousness as maybe you get like a kick or a nudge um, from Valdar. And Valdar, as you see these two wake up... What oh, would, if you value your hives! <laughs> what? What, what goes on here? I pretty much just spew up water, and as I'm spewing up the water, I say, Oh, God, this is why I always drive. Uh. <laughs> my books! Are my books! I check and see if I have my positions with me. Yes, you do. And you were fortunate that um, you guys were provided with these sort of oiled sacks that were would effectively be waterproof. Um, and you had the good sense to keep that close to you and put your spell book in there. So, yes, you have your, your gear with you. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, but you do see this giant crab. And behind it, you, you see um, about, you can make out maybe six figures. They look rather humanoid, but it's hard to tell with the sun kind of beating down on you. Um, and with the fact that you've just roughly been, you know, woken up here. Um, but you can sense you're, you might be in danger. Well, I, I try to... To, if if Salazar isn't waking up, Valdar would try to sling over over his shoulder, uh, and then try to see if there's any place where he could shelter him, right? From you know where we could hide from this thing. Is there enough wreckage to like like a big piece of the hall or something we could yeah. shelter him? Yeah, yeah. So potentially there is a piece of kind of the hull of the ship on the beach. Um, it, I mean it's exposed, right? So at some point this thing probably could get to you but it at least might give you some temporary cover or a way to maybe make make a stand right can i uh can i dash to the top to maybe get a view vantage point the yeah i think that would be fine i think you could run kind of up and you kind of scramble up onto the um up onto the wreckage um and you kind of you know it's sort of half like tipped on its side kind of are standing up on the wall all piratey right and uh yeah. and, you, and you look out and yeah you can definitely see this large crab you know just giant gigantic coming at you and behind it you you see what looks like i don't maybe like you're the crew of the ship or something you can't you can't quite make it out but they look to be wa wearing the you know sailor's clothes um you know they, they have the the same look that your um the, that the people that were bringing you here had but but something seems off about them. They're moving rather slowly and, and, you know, behind this crab. And the crab, actually, you can kind of get the impression the crab is is scuttling ahead of these things. Like, he's trying to, he doesn't want to, you know, mess with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> this boat's ill. Uh, well, crab. Uh, why don't you two guys try to help out Salazar? And I'm gonna stick an arrow in this in this crab's eyeball. Be ready to defend us, Valdar. I'll see to uh, to Salazar myself, and I try to rouse him. You know, uh, maybe I, if my water skin is still with me, I'll, I'll pour some water on, the, on this. And, you Grab sea water. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yes, Grab you um you would be able to raise Salazar. So would you um. Would you and um, and Valdar kind of be trying to like wake him up and maybe pull him into the hull of the ship for cover? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. So you guys are able to do that. Um, and as you're doing that, the crab is getting closer and closer. Cassius, if you want to take a shot at this thing, you certainly can. Um, but you you would know, being being a trained archer, this thing's you know sort of just the plates, you know, the chitinous plates of a crab, they're pretty tough. So this is going to be a tough shot for you to make. Um, but I will say, but because you're standing up on top of, you know, this thing, you have kind of a height advantage on him and you have good clear view. Um, I'll give you a plus two on your roll. 
All right, sure, let's do it. Let's draw one back and let it fly. Do it. All right. Am I rolling a D6? No, you will roll a D20 to hit. Um, and if you have a okay. bonus to your dexterity, you will add that to the roll. Plus the attack bonus for being a fighter. Right? Plus the so. attack bonus, yep. Uh, I got an eight. Okay, so that is not enough to wound this thing. You see your arrow just bounce right off of its hide and goes, you know, kind of back, back to the thing. Um, it definitely, it, it looks up, but it barely seemed to register as it, it just kind of just shrugs it off. And, you know, it's pincers. But it's noticed you. And, and so it's, right. you know. So I'm going to drop down from this wreckage. I'm going to slide down from the wreckage very non-gracefully because now I'm panicked. <laughs> and I'm going to run down and I'm going to yell out to the guys and I'm going to say, I pissed off some hell of a big crab. <laughs> like, guys, guys, that didn't work. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and so what I'll have you guys do for me now, let's, let's formally roll initiative just because I want to um, kind of narrate everything in that sort of structured time. D6. Great. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll let you guys, um, you just keep track of your order, and then I'm just going to call six, five, four, three, whatever. And as okay. you guys have that number, let me know. Um, so who acts on a, on a six? Anybody? Nope. Okay. Five. Four. Ooh, that's no good for you. Crab acts on a four. <laughs> All right. So the, the crab starts kind of... Uh. And... He, he knows that you're in the thing. Um, and, and for a minute, you guys are all sort of huddled in there. And you see the pincers kind of trying to get at you. But you're fortunately in a spot where, like, his pincers are too big. So he's going to make, like, a big... And he just kind of slams his big claw down on the wreckage. The whole thing sort of shakes on you. And um, some debris starts coming down. So far, you're not trapped, but a hole definitely cracks in the hull. You feel like you might have a maybe a round if you're lucky before this guy breaks through. Uh, but who's got a three for initiative? Uh, I do. Okay. All right. Great. So um, we've got Eldrazar and we've got Cassius. Who wants to go first? I'll say uh, Cassius, probably you have the higher dexterity. Yes, um, definitely. Yes. Yeah. So are you going to try to, to unleash another arrow at this thing, or, or what would you like to yeah, do? Yeah, yeah, I'm going I'm to do another arrow, yep. Okay. I'm going to try. Um, so. Okay, great. Um, unfortunately, you don't get the, the plus two bonus this time, because you're kind of shooting yep. through like a thing, and it's, yeah. Um, but yeah, go for it. So I, got a, I got a, not a net, not a critical hit, but a modified 20, so. Okay, well that does hit. So, awesome. Um, so go ahead, I think your bow, does your bow deal a D8 or a D6? D8. D8, yeah. awesome, yeah, go ahead and roll that. And um, I don't know, rules is written, you don't add your strength modifier to damage on a bow, do you? Do you know? No, 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 you don't. no. What's that, no, so for damage, you're just gonna roll your straight D8. Yeah. Okay, so just seven damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. So you managed to get this thing, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like bury an arrow kind of right in between like its neck and its sort of shoulder area, and it pierces right through. This crab lets out this, you know, and it definitely is shrieking in it, and the whole thing is like, and for a moment, um, <laughs> uh, Eldrazar, you kind of almost have to steady your footing here as as your your surroundings are being just jostled by this thing. But um, what are you gonna do here? I frantically dig in the uh, in the uh, sack in the uh, protected sack, and I, I draw out a torch and uh, my tinder and steel, and I do as much as I can to get a, a fire going to light that torch. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, you can um, you would have your flint and, and tinder, um, and I think yeah, you could definitely light the torch. All right. Absolutely. Um, and then are you kind of just gonna stand there, have it ready, but maybe not, or do you uh, brandish well, it? I, I I as soon as I get it lit, I start digging around in the pouch also and draw out a flask of oil. 
Ah, which okay. I, which I do have, yeah. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. So, yes, I'll say that you can do yeah. that. Um, and uh, I think you're able to light the torch, you're able to pull out the flask of oil, but that's about all you have time to do on this round. Um, so who's got a two on the initiative order? Okay. I do. You both do. All right. So um, I'm going to leave it up to you guys, Valdar and Salazar. Who, who do you think would go first? Thief probably has higher dexterity, right? Thief Maybe. Pro- probably. I have, I have a 14. Then you got higher. Go All for right. it. All right. All right. So uh, Salazar is uh, coming conscious. He sits up, coughs out sand and, and water, uh, looks around his surroundings, and like he's got this little, like, oh, I'm still alive. Oh, not today, Papa, he says. And uh, he kisses <laughs> one of the holy symbols that he has around his neck on a chain. He has four of them. And uh, nice. he says, where, what, what, where are we? What's this going on? It's a giant I, crab. I <laughs> giant crab, wake up, Salazar. Oh, he gets his uh, gets his uh, bearings, and then uh, does he see the crap from where he is? Oh yeah, I mean you you would know like you're sort of you come conscious just as like the whole sh- sort of debris of the ship is being jostled, and you see this big pincer and whatever. Yeah, and then you would have probably witnessed um, um, uh, Cassius's like arrow into the thing. So yeah. Okay, very well then. Uh, then I will uh, draw my my short sword and wake up, man. Try and make my way around the back, around the back side of that of that uh, that uh, shipwreck, that hull. Okay, okay. you want to make so, your way around back. Okay, specifically um, unseen yes. or or more just in a strategic manner. Oh, well, if if I can make it unseen, yes, I will. Yeah, I think so you can. You like um, I'm going to actually say that because... Let me see. Well, um, just just for yeah. point of information, I plan to give him a distraction. Okay. How do you plan <laughs> to do that? Because uh, basically, Valder says, I'll, by Thor, I'll be damned if some seafood's going to end me with sin. And he wades in with his broadsword. Nice. Okay. <laughs> then... Then I would say in that case, being that, um, you know, that Cassius landed an arrow and this thing kind of backed off a little bit. And now he sees this human like brandishing his sword. Um, Yeah, Salazar, you would have no problem sneaking around the back um, to try to to try to get a strategic advantage for sure. Yes, I'm trying to get a flanking attack on this creature. So I guess I'm spending my turn doing that in position. Okay, fantastic. all right, and so Valdar, were you going to um, sort of just brandish your sword, no, or were you intending to run in and attack it? Yeah, I'm running in and attacking him. All right, you got it. Go for it. All right, that's uh, twelve plus six, eighteen. All right, so yes, you do manage to find purchase in the soft bits of its flesh. Go ahead and tell me how much damage you deal. That's a total of eight. Wow. Okay. Five plus three. Yeah. So while this gigantic crab has thick armor, once you manage to penetrate it, you find that it is not the toughest creature, and you do manage <laughs> to bring it down. So if you will, go ahead and describe for me kind of what the killing blow looks like. Well, it being a crab and having the, the hole like this, I imagine uh, Valdar saying his, uh, his little sh- speech, charging, shield up, and thrusting over the shield between the two shells. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> and then I think um, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. And then I think probably as that happens, your sword plunges in and you immediately know. Um, but then you realize two things happens. All of a sudden, this like this blood and ichor just starts like spraying. Yeah. And you have to put your shield up to block it from <laughs> your face. And then oh! you, you kind of have to leap and tumble out of the way as this whole thing <laughs> comes oh, down on you. Um. <laughs> And so as that happens, Salazar, you would immediately notice just as you're kind of getting around here and you see the crab fall and you, you know, you see um, Valdar kind of tumble out of the way. 
you guys are not out of the woods yet. Um, you you see that these these humanoid figures, there's six of them, and you can tell that they are your crew, but they don't look like they recognize you. They they look they look really strange. Um, and let me ask you something. You've had you have these holy symbols, right? Have you sort of studied yes. the tenets and the re- and the and the you know religious texts of any of these, or do you just kind of have them as good luck charms? <laughs> No, no, no. I just hedge my bets. That's all. Okay. I, I pray to multiple gods, depending on the situation. So in, in that case, um, you uh, you feel like this might be a time for a prayer because, man, these things don't look right. Um, and they're, they're slowly moving. And as the crab kind of fell backwards, these things ascend on the crab. And you can see they stop and they start trying to like rip through its armor and they're like getting, they're finding the fleshy bits and they're just tearing at it and trying to like eat it. Good, good, good. All right. I'll say a quick prayer to uh, Nayuf, the goddess of silence, so that I can move away without making any noise. And I will move back to my companions and say, we must get out of here while this, these creatures are, are uh, occupied with the, uh, the fresh kill on the beach. <clears throat> and we could have dined well off of that, but you speak sense, man. Into the jungle. Mm. <laughs> have to speak off let us go. They, they notice us. Yes. Yes, exactly. This is a, a macho D&D version of feet. Don't fail me now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> run away, run away. <laughs> and so as you come off the beach and make your way into the thick jungle whoever would be last in the order would look back and realize that apart from your gear which which you still have with you um you are potentially leaving some kind of supplies you would know that there would have been barrels of water there may have been some rations rope wood Mm -hmm. all you know tools stuff like that on the ship Mm -hmm. potentially um but it may not be worth taking those with you. Uh, and whoever is first into the jungle would realize that this is going to be a grind. The, the foliage is just so dense. Now, it seems as though there are no, there have not been civilizations here that have hacked the jungle down. It is all just natural foliage. So it's very, very thick. So you immediately start getting in and maybe 10 feet into, you know, the into the jungle, it's vines on your feet trying to trip you up and great big swaths of j- just huge jungle fauna like in our flora just you know all over the place so uh i, I want to look who's, back. Up, who's up front i guess since i have the hand axe <laughs> right will be my job to hack my way through this all right i'll yeah, be near the back you're saying Elgaza. yeah no, Valdar is in front. Uh, I I, I yep. want to look back and you know try to estimate how many of these uh, count them if I can. How many of these figures are actually on the beach? Because yeah, yeah, you you could uh, tell that there's only six that you can see. Mm. Only six, the DM says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll 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 look at these guys and I'll say. We seem to have been to have been lucky in getting away. They're distracted with a crab. There's half a dozen of them. But it might be wise to procure more supplies and secure our retreat. Uh, I do have holy water here. You seem to be a man of some faith, I say at Sopozar. <laughs> I could arm you with uh, vials of these of this uh, holy water, and we could try to make a uh, an end of these foul creatures. They seem to be the undead, our own crewmen uh, risen. What say you? Do we proceed or secure the beach? You sure they're not just driven mad by creatures in the salt water? Uh, in that case, <laughs> the holy water will not do anything to them. And if they are not mad, then perhaps they can aid us uh, in making our way through this jungle. 
Maybe we should try to uh, draw them away from the ship. Huh? Maybe, uh, maybe somebody who's uh, a feet of foot could go out there and, and draw them away, and then the others could move in, get the supplies, get so them I off. I pull up my bandana and I pull up my hood and I turn and I look and I say, "You better be volunteering yourself, sir." <laughs> <laughs> Well, we all have to die sometime. Today was not my day so far, but uh, today is still young, right? So, you know, we don't know. Uh, I like your attitude. I, I will do, I, I, we, we could do this. I will do this. All right? Well, I, will, uh, I will draw their attention. Uh, just in case. Uh, just in case, here is a, uh, a, a vial of holy water. Uh, might, be, uh, might be worth... Uh, Having, and I'll hand you oh. one of the vials. Right. Thank you, Elza. I appreciate this. All right, I will. Uh, Salazar will then kind of walk up onto the beach. I'll give everyone kind of everyone uh, a single vial. All right. Oh, you got that much? Okay. Holy water vial. Okay. Um. Yes. So. <clears throat> I'll, uh, Salazar will walk onto the beach and, uh, try not to get their intention because I, until I'm, I'm kind of close enough because I don't want them to know where I came from out of the jungle, if at all possible. And, uh, once I feel I'm, I'm close enough and far enough away from my companions, then I will, uh, say, hey, come and get me <laughs> and, uh, make a bunch of noise. <laughs> And uh, I'll start running down the, the the beach, hollering and screaming. Okay. Do I have you? You definitely make it all like all the way, you know, as far as you want to go before making any noise. They they seem occupied with the crab. And as you're kind of making all this noise, right? You see, they all look up for a minute, and then a, this this is an easy meal right here on the beach, and you're you're moving um, and fast. And so three of them actually do look up, and kind of slowly stand up and they start shambling towards you. This is not this is not the chase that I anticipated. I, I look back at my companions, I'm like, what what what, what do I do? What do I do? So. <laughs> okay, so oh, are well. we in brush right now or are we like still thick in the woods are we waiting for him like can we see him do this or? yeah i think you could see him i think you guys kind of just went you know just into tree cover but you could look out um and see the beach still yeah okay so i turn to my companions and i say uh you think you can reach them from here <laughs> <laughs> well if it's I, if I'm flicking my vial in my hand like i'm gonna throw it from the, the point that we're at um, hmm. Weller says, I guess we can start with arrows, though, and he readies his own bow. And so he'll wave as Alice are over as he readies his bow. All right. You want to what? <laughs> you want to fire your bow and you want to you want to call me over? Yeah, he waves you over, so Salazar will bring him. So we can take oh, care of these oh, three. Okay, I see. You want me to? Okay, I got it. All right. Okay. What you were gonna do, but instead of leaving I'll them do that. Yeah. down the beach, but no, I, I'll sure. I'll I, if only three are coming, that's what I'll do. I'll leave three of them towards you guys. All right. So that's this what is I'll do. like old school D and D meets War of Warcraft kiting. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Look, come, come and get me, I say. Come on, come on. Come on. All I'm right. still waiting. I'm, I'm fresher than the, cra the crab is. Fantastic. So so um, so um, don't miss, because um, you don't want to hit Salazar. But uh, these, <laughs> these guys should be pretty easy to hit. Um, so, yeah, he's able to draw them in close enough that um, within bow shot. Um, and so if you guys want, whoever's going to fire, um, you know, I, I'm not. we're not going to roll initiative. I'll let you go first. Okay. I'll... We'll have a vial ready until they reach like about thirty feet, and then okay. I'll, I'll throw it. Absolutely. I got a ten unmodified. So thirteen. 
All right. Wait, what? But you have what's your dexterity? Sixteen. So oh. that's a fifteen. And did you take special specialty with the bow? The weapon uh, specialization. Yeah. yeah. So that's a sixteen. So your yeah. your bow. Because your is your attack bonus at this point is plus three because you're level yeah. four. Um, a sixteen dex is a plus two. Yeah. For a bonus, yeah. yep. And then plus one for your mm -hmm. weapon specialization. Okay. Yep. So, um, yeah. So I mean, for for your bow, if you want, you you're always going to attack at a plus six. Okay. Perfect. Wow. And the the specialization bonus is for damage, even if the strength doesn't. So that. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and that definitely hits. These things are slow and shambling and have no armor. Five damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you manage to bury an arrow into the leg of one of these creatures, um, slows it down, and it actually kind of falls, half falls for a minute, and it's still sort of like dragging itself towards Salazar. Uh, but you've definitely <laughs> wounded it. <laughs> and Valdar, how about you? I rolled also a 10, but in my case, that's a 14. Yep, and that also hits. And my die does five hits. Okay, are you striking a different one than the well, one I, that he hit? If, if at all possible, I try to bring down the same one. Okay, then that does take that one down, absolutely. Headshot. <laughs> and it falls down. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so... Eldrazar, you see one of these zombies go down. There's two left. Um, Salazar's still running in. Um, they're probably going to, within the next round, they will close within close enough range that you could throw your, your thing. Um, are you going to sort of stand and prepare for that, or do you have something else in mind? Uh, no, I think I'm going to stand and prepare for that. Okay, fantastic. Because uh, if, they're, if they're so far away, it's not, not much I can do. Now. Cast a meteor swarm, man. That would solve this. <laughs> that would be nice. And, um, Salazar, I assume you are running far enough away from them that they they would have to try to hurry up to get you? Oh, definitely, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and they can't. They're slow. They seem to be shambling. So they're just going to yes. continue following after you. Uh, but you see, you do kind of sense slash see one of them go down behind you. And what are, <coughs> excuse me, what are you going to do in this case? Uh, I am just keeping them moving around. I'm going to just be running circles around them, uh, so they can't they can't uh, draw draw a bead on where these arrows are coming from. They're okay. more they're more concerned with me, right? Yeah. So I'm making all kinds of noise and running around like a crazy man. Woohoo! Come get me! Come get me! All right. It tastes very nice. Come, come, come. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. And they do. They continue to kind of follow you around a little bit. Um, Awesome, awesome. And so, but th they are kind of now sort of holding out at kind of a medium, a, a, about a medium range. Um, so certainly, you know, Valdar and Cassius, they are within bow shot, no problem. Um, Eldrazar, they may, you would have to probably move out if you wanted to have any chance of throwing that vial. Um, but are you guys going to fire your bows again at them? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. And I'll, I'll move ahead, I guess. You'll move up like, a little bit? Okay. Yeah. 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 If yeah. they're that yeah. slow, I'll just move ahead, throw them, then yeah. run back. Yeah, know? for sure. So. <laughs> I'm yell at Salazar, for the love of God, do not get touched by one of those things. <laughs> nice. So should we all roll? Or? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and, and everybody roll for me. Ooh. Plus two is eighteen. I'm pretty sure I hit. <laughs> you do. You absolutely hit. And that's four points of damage. <coughs> All right. So that, holy water. Yeah, that'll hit both of them. Nice. Because I believe it's got a little bit there of a splash, splash damage. Yep, and they yes. are within five feet. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So the the vial kind of breaks and the water goes everywhere and you see these creatures. <laughs> You know, and as their skin starts to burn and slough off a little bit. Um, and then uh, how about our archers? Are they going to be able to make short work of these guys? No. What's your roll? I got a 10. Total? Wow, with the plus six bonus? Oh, no. Yeah. 
I rolled nine plus yeah. four, 13. You do hit. Oh, Six nice. hits. All right. You manage to take out one, another zombie, thoop, again, right in the head. Seems that the Iron Fist is the is the one <laughs> lucky with the bow today, but um, <laughs> but Cassius, maybe what what caused your shot to go wide is that you notice that the um, the the canoe that was uh, kind of attached, like a, a sort of a little boat that was attached to the big boat, is actually sitting there um, on the beach. That and it's something potentially that that might help you a little bit, um, but again, nice. you, you kind of have to go. <laughs> Back the way you came it. to get it, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I turn and I look at all my all my uh, companions and I go, brothers, that's my canoe. <laughs> it's my brother's ancient canoe from a family tree line, and you guys will never understand how much it means to me. We got to take this thing with us. Uh, it's probably a good idea. As uh, soon as we take these damn things down, you're, it's all yours. <laughs> And uh, and with that, Salazar, you um, you again, you feel and sense another one go down behind you. Um, there's just this one left. Do you want to take your chances and try to take it down? It has been injured by holy water, or are you going to keep up the the no, distraction? No, 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 no. I am quite fine to let the others uh, shoot. Them. <laughs> All right. And for those that watch later, that is being smart. <laughs> it's yeah. called being smart. Exactly. <laughs> Um, before we, we proceed, would you, would any of you have likely seen the dead risen, um, in your lives before this, or would this be the first time that you would have seen this, do you think? Hmm. I would think Eldrazar, uh, has studied, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, magical arts. So there's treatises on necromancy and the risen dead. Mm-hmm. So, so he probably has... Maybe okay. he's seen it. Yeah. All right. And so I think with that, you would definitely know, like, these guys, these things will not falter in their pursuit. Once, mm-hmm. it, unless you kill them or you get out of the way, they will just come at you until they're dead. That's mm-hmm. what he does. That's mm-hmm. all he does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sal- Salazar has never seen uh, the living dead before. So, And these are such freshly dead bodies that, to him, they just look like maybe they've drank too much uh, seawater and they're uh, they've gone mad. Yeah. So that's all. Yeah, Cassius hasn't seen uh, hasn't seen undead before either, but uh, it doesn't bother him because he's, he's signed up for some pretty gruesome things before. But the thing is, is that mostly it's just the stench that's bothering him. Yeah. And he's after the shipwreck and all the other. Valder hasn't seen them either, but he grew. Up, uh listening and believing in all these tall tales so so he's saying things like drown sailors should stay drowned i'm gonna send you back to hell if I have to. awesome awesome <laughs> all right perfect and so with that um salazar keeps kind of running around a little bit um Though oh, yes. the, the ones over by the crab are making short work of that thing i mean you you've seen they basically flipped it over and are just feasting on the the underbelly of it and they're making short work of it you think that it's you know they probably aren't gonna take very long to finish this thing off um damn it all we'll have left is the claw meat <laughs> which <laughs> is in high demand but yeah. yes um yeah they haven't gotten to the claws yet so all right so what do you guys think what do you want to do we've got one zombie left who wants to take it out I'll try and take it out with. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to think because I'm probably closest, right? So yep. I'll try and take it out with uh, an arcane bolt. Okay, so, fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, make your ranged attack, but um, you can use your intelligence modifier instead of your dexterity mm-hmm, mm-hmm. modifier. Um, and, and by now, I'll you know try to get within like uh, maybe 10, 10 feet of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, because it's running. So yep. Uh, I'll, you know, I still have a torch, and I, I, I give my free hand. I just gesture at it, and oh my God, natural twenty! So <laughs> oh baby, all right, yes, so yes. I think I will use um, in this case just whatever damage you have, just double it for a crit. Oh, so and that's awesome because I just rolled a three, uh, a three on the d three, so that's a six, awesome. six hits. Okay, um, so. 
this thing manages to still stay in its unlife, but just barely. So, you know, I imagine like as this arcane bolt of energy comes sort of flying out of your hand and just impacts on this creature, you would actually see this like this light. Um, How do you imagine it would look? Would would it be like this, um, like what color light or, or, or what form would this arcane bolt take? Yeah, it's so probably like a, a greenish light, I suppose. Uh, maybe like a, hmm. I don't know, like maybe a, 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 a like a flaming arrow, but but you know, of greenish yeah. energy that flies off. Yeah. Sweet, awesome. Okay, cool. So yeah, this like sort of green arrow kind of flies out of the wizard's hand, impacts into the thing, and and you would see for a minute. Um, it's like this glow as this bolt almost like sticks into it. And it's, it's all kind of an illu- illusory effect, but, um, mm-hmm. and then you can see the light from the inside start to like expand a little bit. And the sort of left side of this thing poosh, just kind of explodes out. And so this thing is sort of nice. just kind of shambling at you with one arm. Um, nice. And Salazar, at this point, it has definitely turned its gaze from you. It no longer is concerned about you, but towards the the thing that it that caused it um, so much pain. Um, and um, Cassius, you would notice this as well. This thing is is about ready to fall over. You know, probably it would fall over if somebody gave it a push. Hmm. Um. Are the others are still uh, occupied. They are. Okay. Is there is there a large rock I can sit down on and, and get the sand out of and, and water out of my boots? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I think there would probably be like a rock or um, you know some kind of like debris or something. Yeah. All right. All right. So Salazar will uh, plop himself down on the rock and uh, take off his <laughs> boots and start emptying sand while uh, this other this last uh, creature is, is uh, handled. Uh, I think his work is done for now, and he'll wait until the others, you know, the other creatures maybe, maybe you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, see him and, and try to decide to do something. Yep, Stick absolutely. Sword in the sand, just kind of wait. Sure. All right, and Cassius, what do you? What about you? Do you think? Uh, do you want to try to take this guy out, or do you want to head over to this family heirloom of a of a canoe? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm in my angry and uh, arrogant state of missing most of my shots. I hardly, rarely ever do. So you I'm missed gonna, one. Then. I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm torn from it though. That one <laughs> arrow is breaking me up. So I walk up. I'm gonna walk right up to this zombie with my short sword and try to dice its head right in half. All right, yeah. excellent. Yep, go for it. Um, and I'm gonna give you a plus two for this attack because it is distracted and it's basically half dead. So add plus I two to whatever you would normally. I critically missed. Oh no. <laughs> Did you oh, really? That, wow. Okay. Bad dice night. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. Yeah. Well, oh it's it's god. good. Get those out of the way now. Um, all right. And so, uh, as you kind of go in, right, and you you kind of stick your blade or try to stick your blade into it, I imagine that it like it kind of impacts with like the exposed spine. Right, but it doesn't like you don't have a good, you know, angle on it because you're used to firing the bow, and so it kind of like slips right up, and you actually like kind of tumble over a little bit, but you've now tumbled like kind of behind it and onto the beach, and your movement has drawn the notice of the other three zombies, um, and they kind of look up, and then, um, you know, they take like a, a few last bites off of this carcass, and they see you know fresh meat lying there prone on the ground and so they're gonna start to get up okay. and hobble their way over oh and God, uh, I see God, this? One. you would yep yeah and uh then i scream for help yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah ah! all right Bless me. Uh. and so yeah you guys do see the cells are you would probably see this as well have I got my boots back on yet, or are they still off? Yeah, I would say, I would say you do. All right. All right, so, um, so. all right, so here they come. They're coming towards me, so I kind of, you know, crank my neck a little bit. They're coming, they're coming, get my sword, swing it around a little bit. 
And I look back to the to my companions. Like, are we going to do the same thing again, or do you want to change it up a little? Go for it. <laughs> yeah, Val Valor has to go for it as he runs. Bo still in his left, draws his his sword and tries to finish the guy <laughs> off before he jumps on Cassius. All right. Okay. All right. Then uh, are we rolling initiative at this point? Yeah, why don't we do that at this point? We'll roll initiative. Oh, zombies don't need to roll. All right. <clears throat> and you guys can tell me this time what you get. Sure. Five. Oh, yeah. Six. All right. Two. <laughs> Those one. Damn, man. Damn. All right. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right. All right. So, um, yeah, Salazar, you seem to... Uh, to be fleet of foot, aware, you get you get to act first. Um, so there right, is still the one away. zombie, like all, kind of looming over um, <laughs> Cassius at this point. You know that in that failed attack. Although, oh. you know he's he's not immediately all over right. him, but because Cassius kind of fell back, but it, within five feet of him for sure. And then the others are, are okay, probably and the others. Off. Yeah, we'll shamble over within a, uh -huh. a few rounds. Um, they're probably. 40 okay. feet, 50 feet. Yeah. Lots of time. Yep. All right. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put an end to this one that's over, Cassius. All right. Excellent. I'll swing with my short sword into the base of his neck. Come. All right. Uh, 14. Okay. You hit it, and he's only got one hit point left, so you'll kill it. Um, so if you want to describe kind of what the killing blow looks uh, like. Drive. I, I just drive the my short sword into the, into the base of his skull probably comes out through his part of his throat and then i've got to kick you know with my foot i've got to pull my blade out of the out of his uh, the base of his skull and awesome. uh, let him fall to the ground nice and as he okay. does so wipe it on my cloak <laughs> yeah perfect and um yeah as he does so you can see you know just the the blood and whatever it's all congealed and it's just you know it, it's not the way a, a, a normal living person would die um it doesn't look like maybe what you've seen when people have gotten injured or slashed or killed um this is this and it's foul it smells just tremendously bad um but yes you have managed uh -huh. to take this thing out and so for the moment you guys you know you have a moment or two before these other three are going to come at you um and surveying the beach, you don't see any any other immediate signs of danger, um, but definitely the you know the sort of supplies and whatever um, are still there near at least whatever supplies are still mm -hmm. available are still there. Um, so let's see, Valdar. All right, since uh, nobody's close by, he's gonna shoot an arrow at one of the 40, 50 feet away. All right, go for it. Ooh, 19 plus 4. That usually hits. That does hit. Mm. Uh, oh, man. 8. What is it with these dice today? Wow. <laughs> eight wow. Hits. All right. So, yeah, you kind of just let the, the shot go, and the bolt buries again right into the thigh of one of these things, and it, it kind of falters for a minute, and it's it's hobbling still, but it's a little bit slower. But, man, this determination on this thing, it's, it's still coming for you. Um, it's still alive. All right, do you want to try to reposition yourself, or are you going to stand and hope that you can take them down before they can make it to you? Uh, nah, I'll stand because if they get close, I'll, I'll switch to sword and ward. Okay, fantastic. And Eldrazar? I, I fish in my uh, uh, sack again, and I draw another vial, and... Uh, they're about 50 feet, feet away, you said. Jeez. Uh, and uh, are we all standing like in a line? Somebody in, in front or? Well, I would imagine mm. that um, that uh, Cassius is kind of like out farther ahead of you. Um, and then, yeah, I would think um, Salazar would have run up and kind of stabbed the one near that. So okay. you, you and, and, and uh, Valdar would be kind of sort of next to each other. Sort of standing back. Yeah. Okay, so I'll 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 walk a bit forward to uh, to where the other to you know, the other guys are, so that I'm like what 30, 50, 40 feet away. Yeah. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and throw that that vial at them. All right. 
And that's an eight. Are they like, they're more than 30 feet out, right? Um, I mean, you could, well, what's your movement overland? Do you uh, have? I have like all of it because I have no armor. So it's yeah, like okay. 40. I yeah, think. so you, so I would say that it's possible to move within, um, within probably 30. about 30 feet of them. Yeah. Okay. So it's within 30, then it's a 10 total. A 10 yeah. total. All right. Yeah. That does not miss. Um, and unfortunately, or it does not hit. It does miss. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and it goes whoosh, and kind of splashes off to the side a little bit of them. Okay. Enough to kind of draw their attention a little bit. And it it, mm-hmm. it would slow them down for just a moment, um, probably as they're distracted. Um, and Cassius, you kind of would see these guys kind of distracted and looking over at whatever this vial was for just a moment. And so you have a, you have an opportunity here if you want to take it to do something. Okay. Well, I'm going to do uh, like the HBK Shawn Michaels handspring <laughs> up back <laughs> up onto my feet. Yep. And I'm going to try to dust myself off and regain some of my confidence that I obviously just lost. Yep. And uh, just going to draw up with my longbow and just uh, try to loose an arrow. Dig one in. Okay, go for it. Oh, a critical hit. Thank God. Yes. Yes. Nice. Uh, yes. Redemption. Yes. Are you, are you oh. going to um, try to hit the one that's already been injured or uh, one of the No, fresh ones? I'm not going to no. waste this on that. All righty. <laughs> go ahead and roll your dice, and then whatever the result is, just double it for me. Perfect. So roll that eight. And the plus one. Okay, so you get a four. Um, Yes, plus one. Okay. Six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So this thing, um, again, very similar. You bury your um, your arrow kind of right into its chest cavity, and for you know, and it staggers it back and kind of knocks it down. Um, and then you can see it trying to kind of get itself up, but in, instead what it's doing is it's kind of just grabbing with its arms in the beach, just kind of slowly trying to grab its way towards you guys. Um, so there's there's still two standing, um, but one is injured. This one is just crawling, and there seems to be one left that is uh, that's now going to try to come for you. Um, actually... What are there? Let's see. They, yeah. So one of them is gonna try to get to you. The other two can't make it. Let's see. No. Well, what's your armor class? No, it can't hit you. Never mind. Unless it's less than eight. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So it kind of comes at you and tries to whoosh, take a swing, um, but you know you kind of manage to like dodge out of the way or maybe parry it a little bit. Um, definitely does not hit you. And let's re-roll initiative because I like doing it each round. I think that's the raw way to do uh-huh. it, but I like the, I like it that like way it. too. Me too. Yep. Oh. Uno. Wow. <laughs> I joined Drew's club. <laughs> nice. Um, Todd, what did you get again? One. What you? Three ones? What is oh, going no. on here? Oh no! All right. Well, so Eldrazar, you seem to be the one um, that gets to act yep. here. Uh, there's one wounded guy and two wounded guy. guys. Oh, that's um, right. And on one, on one yeah. non-wounded guy. Yeah. And the uh, non-wounded guy is in melee range for you and Cassius. Oh. He just All took right. a swing at Cassius. Yeah. So I. Oh. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Hmm. You know what? I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to throw uh, another vial of water at the wounded guy because he's on top of Cassius, so I might as well use that. No, the non-wounded guy is the on The non-wounded on guy is on Cassius, yeah. He was the only one that could oh. make it to Cassius, yeah. The other two... Oh, so I'm, um, I'm yeah. going to hit that guy anyway. I'm going to try yeah. to hit that guy, and then I'm going to run back to these guys. All right. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, yes. 17 plus 3 is 20. All right. And that is four hit points of holy water damage. Okay. And it's great because I can't injure 
Cassius with it. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, Cassius, you would get a little bit of, you know, holy water <laughs> on you here, but um, it's probably more comforting than anything because you can hear the, the sort of the hissing and the bubbling on this zombie over you as its, as its flesh is sort of burning under this holy water and it's... I mean, if it hurt him, we'd be attacking him now. Good thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. We might have some questions to ask if it was hurting him. Exactly. <laughs> All right, and so Salazar, our um, intrepid thief, how do you react? Mm. Uh, so Cassius is being is being threatened by one of these things. He, he is. Yep. Uh, all right, then uh, I'll I'll come in from behind and uh, and uh, swing at uh, at its knees, to try and okay. take it down. Yeah, and this thing would not be sure. able to see you, so I think you could you could potentially get your sneak attack for sure or your backstab. All right, that gives me a plus four. All right, oh you all, that is uh, seven. I must have. I don't. Know. I think that Stumbled potentially the that. yeah the ichor and the and the blood that is spewing from this thing in the water, you know, it kind of made the the footing. You know, you kind of step in the sandy mud almost. Um, and mm-hmm. yeah, your your aim is off, so you just kind of yes. whiff right by this thing. Oops. Too bad. And uh, I tried. Right, Cassius. You know, you do the best you can, right? And That's Cassius. Right. You see your, the valiant attempts of your companions to try to get the zombie off of you. Um, how will you treat this situation? I uh, I turn to all my friends and I say, uh, you still owe me one favor, guys. I still need the canoe. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the efforts, gentlemen. I really, truly do. Most gracious. Now... And do you, so this guy is like kind of right on you. Are you um, are you gonna try to attack him? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna attack him. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a short sword attack. I guess. Cause okay. He's so close. Yeah, right. go for it. Uh, actually, I still got that holy water veil. So the vial. I'm yeah, you. That. You do. You do. Absolutely. Um. So go ahead okay. then and throw that. Um. I don't think I'm going to treat this with any kind of penalty because I feel like you don't, it's not like firing into melee. You just, you can just smash it on him. Yeah. Yeah. Or just open it. All right. So yeah, just um, (laughs) like a melee attack. Yeah. I I guess if you wanted to kind of just like smash it, like right into its face, we could treat Mm -hmm. that as a melee attack. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 19. Yep. Oh, Yep, that, the, uh, that hits it. So go ahead nice. and roll a d8. Three. Okay. And so again, just kind of this vial now with the glass and the holy water in its face. And this thing is definitely distracted. But it, this one is tough. This was, you know, probably like... Um, you know that what I don't know what the ranks are on the ship, but whatever the guy would be that would like you know keep order and and uh, the know, bosun, the bosun, the bosun yeah, yeah, beat people up when they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. Um, but you don't take it down quite yet. But Valdar, all right, so because I want to see Cassius do more play than I do. Valdar moves in and hacks at it with broadsword. All righty, go for By it. By Odin, stay dead, would you? That's an 8 plus 6, 14. That is a hit. And that is a 7 hits of damage. And that is just enough to take it down. Um, So what does that scene look like? Well, this being sort of a barbarian fighter, splits the skull to the teeth. I mean, that's really the only logical (laughs) description for it. Ah, Stay dead by Odin. Nice. (laughs) And then I, I think this thing, yeah, and it would be like that, that slow motion where it's like, and then it, it's sort of like, and it's like bleh. <laughs> yep. very subtle, my friend, very subtle. Yes. <laughs> so that one is down. Um, 
then you you still got the the sort of shambler, right? The one that's that's still kind of walking along, and then the guy that's like pulling himself along towards you. Yeah, but they're I mean they're real slow. Um, you know, at this point they're they're gonna try to move. The shambler guy is gonna try to move in, um, but he yeah he's not gonna have enough movement to to get to you guys. Um, you can sort of scramble back. So at this point. Um, we could go for one more round of initiative if you want, or if you want to, realizing you guys will be able to, to get out of the range of these guys with no problem, you could just kind of avoid them. Um, All right. It's up to yes. you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I, I see no need yep. to... Uh, but we should try and finish them into, anyway. Into a, yeah. well, I mean, finish them, but don't, we don't need to get close up to do that. Right. Yeah. I okay. Finish them from a distance. All right. Um, so I think in this case, again, because on, if you're going to stay out of range of them, they're not going to be able to come in and get you. So uh, you can just make attacks. We don't really need another initiative round. Um, uh -huh. Yep. Uh, and I'll say who, whoever wants to attack the one um, that's kind of just arm on arm, you get a plus two on that <laughs> attack because that's very easy to hit. <laughs> I'm hitting that guy with an arcane bulk, and that's... Uh... 15 plus yep, that hits. A, a bunch. Yeah, it hits. Yep. It's uh, just... Uh, oh, actually, it's a five, so it's three hits. Three hits on the arcane bolt. Okay. <laughs> nice. You got a, you, you said you rolled a five? Uh, it's, I'm rolling a d6 because it only does one damage. Oh, yeah, okay. One, uh, one yep. two is one. Three, yep. four is two. Five, six is three. So yep. full damage. Full yes. damage. And that actually <laughs> takes it out. So... Yes. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, so that's good. Um, I'm going to say that you guys, you don't even have to roll for attacks on the next one. You'll be able to coordinate and just take it out. Um, and so you've managed uh -huh. to finish off the zombies on the beach here. You notice that um, there are definitely a few boxes and barrels um, along with this canoe around the boat itself you also realize that you based on sort of the position of the sun um it's probably late afternoon at this point so you probably only have a few hours until sundown um what would you guys like to do all right i think i think we should make camp here in the uh in the wrecked out hull of the ship we have uh, protection somewhat from the uh elements uh the weather and uh, we also have an open line of sight in case something is coming towards us we yes. can build a fire here in the wood all right what do you yep. think yes that's well. good Makes that's sense. good but let's use this time to gather what supplies we can yes all right and then in, then in the morning maybe we can recce around and see what uh more of this island Perfect. I appreciate all your efforts, gentlemen, tonight. <laughs> well, it hey. seems you live to have your canoe, so... Uh, and Matt's got to have his canoe. <laughs> yep. Let us secure that as well. <laughs> Outstanding. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. And so, uh, as, as you guys are kind of um, salvaging and, and, and preparing to make camp... Um, You'll know. You'll have. Uh, I, you can just list it as um, ship supplies, um, and I'm going to mm -hmm. treat it somewhat narratively in the sense that uh, it, it will be one of those things where you'll have three uses of it. Um, and it, if you need wood, if you need rope, you know something that would make sense um, that you would get in a ship, you would have. Um, Grog. Mm -hmm. Yep. There, there are. Uh, there is definitely um, a. <laughs> There's a, a barrel of rum and a barrel of fresh water. Um, the, the water uh -huh. is probably enough based on the heat and the fact that there's four of you, probably about um, two days worth of water. Um, and obviously the alcohol will not help you in staying hydrated, but it might, you know, <laughs> might help that otherwise. Thing is, that thing is flammable, my friend, so, it, you know, it might be. Potentially, yeah. You have you yeah. you've had luck with uh, with using liquids to uh, to damage things. Awesome. Um, and so, uh, uh, so Sam, are we going to say that it's uh, 
we don't really have to make a list of, of what what we find. It's more of what uh, we, we would reasonably right. Right. find. Uh, yep. Yep. At the exactly. Time we can say, okay, well, I, all right. Okay. Yeah, and so as a party, you'll have basically three <clears throat> uses of it, um, and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's that. I would say keep track of the fact that you have two days uh, worth of water rations, um, and you also find um, two days worth of food rations um, in a in a chest. Now, the one thing though to keep in mind is that these supplies are rather big and rather bulky. So if mm-hmm. you wish to take them into the jungle mm-hmm. with you, that obviously will slow you down. Um, and, and how big? Yeah. Go ahead. How big is the canoe? How big is it? I mean, the canoe would be big enough to potentially fit all of you in there. It's, it's a travel canoe. Yep. Um, okay. So okay. you could potentially put some supplies in it if you wanted to. Yeah. Couldn't we just stack our supplies in the canoe and then lift the canoe as a, as a unit? You certainly could. That's called the portage. Portage, yes. One of you will have to bushwhack through the jungle um, to make a path, but the rest of you could potentially get through. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Or why couldn't we, why why couldn't we take the canoe out onto the water, and then go out of it and try and wreck you around well, the island? We might find an, uh, it and everything is okay on the water. Oh, we wouldn't. No, I wouldn't go out there in a storm. No, no, no. But yeah, you could hug the coast. Um, yeah. yes, you could certainly coast. do that and see if maybe there's like a river or an inlet or something. Um, That's what I was thinking. Might, yeah, river. Yeah, because you you guys would or have been lagoon, able to or see, lagoon. Right, you would have been able to see that. Um, sort of, and and based on the information that you were given, there's like a mountain in sort of the center of the island, and p- supposedly on that mountain is the Temple of Tranquility. So. You know, uh, and we also know that the uh, Temple of Tranquility is uh, supposedly where the waters of life originate. So it's quite possible that it's a river, but it might lead us to that. Indeed, that's right. And right. Th- didn't Let's we have like camp. a map? Uh, you know, a map. Could... Yeah, you you like a map. You did mm-hmm. kind of, but it, the map was mostly. Um, it was pretty sparse. It kind of just showed like the beach area where the pirates originally landed. And then they went into the jungle. Um, so it kind of shows like, okay, you know, here's the beach, here's the forest, here's the mountain, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. It's not a very good map. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you would be able to make camp. Um, and let me just, Oh boy. There's going to be a wandering monster. Um, however, before we get to that, I have to use the restroom. So I'm going to take a quick five minute break. Um, and then right. we will be right back and we will see what happens. Sure thing. I'm going to get some water too. <laughs> Good bio break.
right. So how do you get the players to not run away from the monster? You dangle treasure in front of them. Of course. Yep. Say, oh, there's supplies yeah. there. Well, you know, El Eloy actually did that once when we were starting to try out 3.0. And there was like this like huge sort of like big magical panther <laughs> yep. on top of a treasure chest. Yeah. And everybody's like, let's go. I'm like, no, no, no. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no. There's a treasure chest. Yeah. But there's and this a big was magical panther on top of it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this was before the term murder hobo had been coined. So. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Cool. Well, we'll wait until everyone gets back, and then I will have you guys tell me... Um, which order you will have kept watch but um man so far i think you know you guys fared well i mean uh didn't didn't take any injuries mm -hmm. that's good you know nope that's actually nope. Yeah. those yep. 10 vials of holy mm. water that i bought paid off <laughs> yeah yep. not having a cleric no big deal <laughs> no big deal that's right yeah well, you know, this is the uh, eternal. I was talking with Jason, of course, uh, one day, and I complained of the only old school game that wizards don't have too many spells. And he's like, wait a minute, if you really want to be old school about it, how many spells does Gandalf have? Yeah, Gandalf, <laughs> the thing is, though, got a point. If, yeah. you, if you look at it, though, <laughs> D, like D&D &D wizards are not Gandalf, like, no. by any means. I don't know that Gandalf would be classified as a wizard if we were to, if we were to sort of base it on D&D &D or, or even base it on something like, you know, Merlin, right? Like, right. Merlin's a wizard yeah. as, or maybe a druid, but, like, I don't yeah. know. I, I, you know Gandalf's I an like, angel. Right? Yeah, he's right? He is. He's he's some kind yeah. of like extra planar being. I I feel like. Um, but technically, he he's yeah. a wizard because well, they call Tolkien him calls him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. But if you think about it, yeah, I mean, he uses that like his staff to like hit the ground and cause an earthquake thing. He's and like, a fire he's spell on the wall. Yeah, and then he and, just uses uh, his, acorns you know, and fire and whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I, you know, there's Talks it's, the butterflies. Yeah, it's funny. There's like, um, you'll see it all over <clears throat> social media and Reddit and whatever about what exactly, how would you class Gandalf in D and D? And it's well, there's uh, like a really old article, I think, sixth issue of the Dragon Magazine, titled famously titled like like a or or some something that effect. I can't remember, but it's it's like the first twenty issues or something. Oh, wow. So, yeah. you know, we're not the first to notice. <laughs> right. Oh, totally. Totally. <laughs> but the point is that Jason mm -hmm. said, you know, if you're playing the wizard, just play him smart yeah. and do research and, you know, load up on, like, oil and holy water and right. stuff like that. And Hosea's told me this, too. So. Right. Yeah, because yeah. You, you, don't have, you don't have to spend your money on armor and weapons, right? So right. he's yep. the guy to have the oil and the holy right. water. Well, and that's the thing that I like so much about these older editions is that, like, gear is so important, you know? And, uh, yep. like, when you think about the fact that you're playing a game of adventurers, uh, you know, in, in more modern games, they don't go adventuring in the classical sense, you know? They just go rampaging. No. But, like, it, equipment, and I, like, you and, almost and, don't even write it down in half the cases, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I, I My 5e group that I play with, I don't... I won't, I won't DM it, but I, yeah. I play with yep. uh, these guys, and yeah, like like gear is almost hand waved. Like, yeah, you don't care about torches, you don't care about rations, you know, none of this stuff, right? And uh, I mean, and then you can go extreme. I mean, uh, yeah. what is it? Torchbearer. Uh, Torchbearer yeah. is very much about resource management. Yeah, uh, that's that's the uh, that's the thing that they really uh, focus on. Yeah. This is here. Fifth, oh, fifth level magic user. I just I'll have to look at that later on. There you go. Nice. <laughs> just fifth. Wow. So you'll catch up to him wow. in one level, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yeah. You shall not pass. Okay. So <laughs> let's see. Okay. So you make camp. Um, how would you guys set a watch order? 
Okay. Four of us. Uh... I I would go first because I'm the weak weakling magic user. Yeah. <laughs> well, you need the the uninterrupted sleep. But, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Valdar volunteers. We're gonna to have a fire. Oh, the middle. Yeah, we'll have yeah. a fire. I would think so. Valdar will okay. take one of the middle shifts. He's willing to do okay. the sleep. So are we going to have uh, two... What do, what do you think about having two people sleep inside the hull and then two people outside by the fire, one sleeping, one awake on watch in case Sounds good. something happens, at least you have somebody right there with them rather than trying to you know, go, go get everybody from inside the ship to come out, right? All right. All right. Yeah, I'll volunteer um, for a watch, watch, for night watch. Oh yeah, a, we'll all, we'll all, we should all do a watch. We should all do a watch. Right? Okay. So you okay. think um, Eldrazar first, first, and then uh, Valdar second? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh-huh. Eldrazar, you then... pass your watch with with no, um, you know, with nothing. Un, you know, strange happening. I mean, except for the sounds of the jungle, um, and and clearly, you know, you could see sort of like the eyes of animals peeking out of the jungle at you. Um, you do sit, hear some rustling, um, but nothing untoward happens in the night, and you are able to wake Valdar and report that nothing nothing does happen. And Valdar, about a few hours into your watch. Um, you start to hear something coming along the beach. Um, you're not quite sure what it is. You can vaguely make out movement. Um, it seems to be kind of trying to stay out of the radius of your fire. Um, so it doesn't seem like it wants to get too close, but it definitely looks like it's it's kind of getting in close to kind of see what's going on. All right. So he'll wake the others. Hey, there's something mm-hmm. stalking us. All right. I'll uh, I'll say a quick prayer to uh, Nayuf, Goddess of Silence, and uh, I'll skulk into the shadows, trying to get a look. Okay. I will. I will grab another from my pack and light it at the main fire. The torch, okay. Yes, just poke it in the fire and light it up, just in case. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let me see. Just gonna check this. All right, and okay. So you're kind of holding your torch there um you guys are all kind of alert at this point and uh salazar kind of goes sneaking off a little bit um to see if he could figure out what it is salazar you manage to kind of sneak your way along the the beach you're getting closer to this thing and as you get in closer and closer you you realize that this is this is not a humanoid it it looks you know it's on four legs um as you get in even closer you you start to see um it, you know, it's it's definitely a longer thing. It's got a tail of some kind, um, and unfortunately, you were not able to sneak in silently enough. This thing does become aware of you. Um, are you going in with a torch, or no? Oh, no, no, no. no I no, didn't no, think no. so. Okay, um, just wanted to double check. But okay, so you are right out the, sort of the edge of like the 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 radius where the campfire would give you any light. But you you hear this like yes, a growling sound, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it seems to be aware right. of you. And, like, and I so I see a long long creature with the long tail. Is it uh, low to the ground? Yes, it is. Or okay, all right. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard to make okay. out features beyond that. Um, but it's it's fairly large uh-huh. and it is growling at you and seems to be aware of you. It's growling at me. How far away do I think it is? Uh, it's probably within about 10 feet of you. Okay. I will back away from it towards the firelight. And uh, I'm not I'm not turning my back on it. And I'll just call out to the others. Uh, we have something coming to visit us. Make preparations, my friends. Okay. 
Okay, let's I see. I will walk back in towards the camp. Perfect. And, okay. So, it does not immediately um, try to attack you, uh, but it definitely seems hostile. But as you kind of make your way back towards the firelight, just as you kind of get within the fire, it kind of peels off a little bit and as it's kind of it looks like it's trying to go around um, to sort of figure out what's there you realize that this thing mm-hmm. is scaled um, this is probably some kind of reptilian creature Ooh. okay all right I'll, I'll report my findings to the rest of them yep and yeah. at this point you, you as he reports you can see the figure out here it's it's you can't make out exactly what it is but it's you can definitely see something out there Mm-hmm. With my uh, jungle awareness and like an experience, would I know? Would you know what it is? I mean, so reptilian creatures in you know sort of an island jungle setting. I mean, being that it's got legs, the most likely thing it's probably some sort of either like crocodile or lizard or um, something along those lines. And it's okay, walking so on know. four legs or two yep, legs? On four, four, legs. four. Yep, and it's okay. got a big tail. So now it's kind of it's skirting the firelight. Is that yep. what you're saying? Yep. All right. I I, I don't think it's going to... As long as we keep the fire burning, I don't think it's going to attack us. We should be village, village, vigilant, though. Um, I, for one, don't want to go traipsing around in the dark trying to fight it, but uh, you know what it is now. That sounds prudent. It would have to be very hungry, risk nearing the fire, I should think. Hmm. More wood, That's perhaps. right. Yeah. Yes, so build more up the wood, fire. more wood. Yeah. All right, so mm-hmm. I'll take some more of the drier wood and build up the fire. Okay. Okay. And as you do that, you see it kind of make its way around kind of behind the um, the way I imagine it is like if if the sort of the ruins of the ship are here and your campfire was kind of like over here a little bit the, mm-hmm. the this, this creature is sort of coming around the back here because it's trying to get away from the firelight mm-hmm. and so as it kind of gets around to the back um, that's when it starts to slow and it starts to actually come a little bit closer and a little bit closer into you know where where you would have your supplies, pop, pop, probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's going after the supplies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and is anybody currently in the hull right now, or were you guys kind of giving it like you were watching it, but kind of giving it some distance? Yeah, I'm kind of standing in front of Eldrazar and like kind of like with my hand on his chest, like, and I'm I'm turning to him. What's your opinion on the situation? What do you think we should? Mm-hmm. If it goes after our supplies, uh, maybe it would be prudent to scare it away. Uh, uh, we could try and, and make noise, perhaps fire an arrow at it. If there's a chance we'll just anger it and it might want to attack us. We should drive it away if it takes our food. We just fought hard to get this food. Mm. Um, what did we do with all those bodies? Did we just leave them on the beach. I would assume because so. there's yeah. so it's not interested in the carry and it's out there. Hmm. Um, and I imagine we had some good crab meat for supper. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Claw. Did you? I mean, considering those things were were chomping on it. Um, <laughs> I didn't think they got to the to the the claw. True, that's true. You, if yeah, yeah. okay. I see. I don't like to work that hard for my food, so. But yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me neither. Usually in real life, but yeah. So we probably would have put like the claws themselves on the fire. There you go. Let them cook in there. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, (laughs) uh uh All right. Yeah, and so you can tell this thing is definitely going to go towards the, um, the, the like the little chest or box that would have the food supplies in it. Yeah, 
think we should try and rub it off. So the wizard's intellect is obviously the uh, most reasonable way to go with this. So uh, I'd say, Galbar, let's uh, draw the bills. I, I, at this point, uh, either Jason or I can say something. That's me talking. That's not the smart guy's the wizard. That's me talking. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Can we drag? Can we drag the? Uh, can we drag the supplies like the the the, the closer food, to the fire? Yeah. The fire. Why don't we yes, just do that? you can absolutely. Um, We've built up the fire. Yep. Maybe we can plant some torches in a circle, but get the uh, yeah, get the chest, the food close to the fire. Okay. And keep your arrows beaded on these things. This thing. Yeah, it does. Um, it does seem like as you kind of um, let me see. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, actually this thing that does seem to deter it as you kind of bring it towards the fire, it does not want to get in near your fire. And so after a little while, um, it sort of skulks around a little bit and then realizes that this is going to be too hard and it, it kind of skulks its way back off the way it came. Do we see it? Is it uh-huh. like a... It, it doesn't want to work that hard for its meal either. Yeah, it, yeah <laughs> you, you would have been able to see it. It's definitely a crocodile. It's definitely a crocodile. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you cut out a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yep. It's a crocodile. No, yeah. no TikTok sounds, though, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not yet. That, that's later. No. Um, <laughs> that's later on. <laughs> yep. But, yeah, Wait so. Do we know. Yeah. Go ahead. Crocodiles are freshwater animals, aren't they? Do we know that? Probably. Are they? I thought they were. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got a point. In the, yeah, yeah that, that means there's fresh water. That is a good sign. And he will return to it. He will return to the fresh water. You, you so to we should keep an eye on this. Perhaps we can track which direction it goes off onto. Track it back. That'll be one second. It goes yeah. into the in, on the. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. If it uh, goes down the beach, we can follow its trail. If it goes into the jungle. Well. It might be a little more difficult, but we can give it a try. Best way to warn you. Um, what was that? Do you have good tracking skills? Well, <laughs> there's there's no rangers uh, here, but uh, my my guy's an outdoorsman. No. How that doesn't mean he tracks like a ranger. He can hunt. Yeah. Yeah. This thing crashes to the to the jungle, though. We should be able to see some sort of sign of it, maybe. Yeah, for sure. So, I, I think. But as you say. Please. Yeah. Well, so and I assume so. Really, nothing kind of happens for the rest of the night. You guys manage to make it through until yeah. dawn. Um, and then, yeah, at dawn, you know, after you kind of you know make breakfast, do your thing, um, and you guys are are deciding. Uh, I assume you you still want to use the idea where you're going to put all the supplies in the boat and kind of. Carry the boat. Yeah, you could probably drag it at least along the the beach until you get to the jungle. But um, it wouldn't be difficult for you to track the footprints of this thing. Um, and it, it definitely kind of walked along the beach for a little ways, and then definitely head into the jungle. Um, <coughs> but of mm. course, because the jungle is so thick, it's it's hard for you to see beyond maybe, you know, 10 feet in, um, but it definitely went straight into the jungle. Um, but you've probably walked about 50, 60 feet down the beach um, before it did that. And we don't hear any... Sorry, you cut out there. What would you say? We don't hear any water, right? Like, from no. here we can't hear, like, river or anything. Like that. Nope. Okay, well, huh. we can definitely skirt the river. Or skirt along the coastline until we try to find the river. Mm-hmm. At least we can do is circle around for at least a few hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Might be, might be. Yeah. We should learn until. Til- why would yeah? Why would we do that? Okay. All right. Absolutely. So load everything onto the canoe. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. And okay. Yeah. You definitely. Um, 
as you kind of make your way around the coast, you, you see one area where it looks like there's a little bit of an inlet and it does seem that there's water trickling down. It doesn't quite look like a river yet, but based on you know your knowledge of how these things work, you would assume that you go a little ways in um, and you will find a river. However, mm-hmm. it's still the beach. So it seems like whatever for whatever reason, the water cuts off a little bit. Um, maybe it's a dry season or whatever. Mm-hmm. So you may have to go a little ways into the jungle um, before you find enough water to put in your boat. Um, okay. But you get the impression okay. that, that you will be able to do so. Yeah, I guess we'd we'd go right. up to the to where the water trickles out and make sure, in fact, uh, uh, sweet water, like not salt water. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So you will have to kind of bushwhack your way in a little bit through the jungle, um, and you you kind of man you manage to do so, but between the trek, you know, around here and kind of cutting your way through the jungle and the slow movement as you do that. You know, that takes several hours um, before you're able to make it in, but you do find the beginnings of a river that seems to travel um, kind of into the interior of the thing. And I mean, dense jungle all around you, but you you think that you could probably put your boat in here. Um, and you also notice lots of tracks similar to that crocodile um, all around mm-hmm. here. Hmm. So what hmm. will you do? Don't fall in the water, my friends. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dangerous no. river. In. Yep. Yes. You must be careful. I touch the burlap um, seat to the canoe and I say a simple prayer and a tear sheds down my face. <laughs> say we can't leave her behind, boys. <laughs> 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 This certainly oh, looks no, no, no. We can't be looks, behind. No. <laughs> this certainly looks sturdier than the coracles I'm using. Is it difficult to pilot, uh, Cassius? Ah, uh, no. She she rides and sails like a breeze. Oh, well. Nice. And will you board your canoe and put it into this river and try to make your way yeah. up? Okay. Yeah, sure. that's the plan. Yeah. It's kind of small. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it can fit us all. Yep. So we can navigate properly in this small. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I imagine two of you would paddle this canoe. Um, and as you do so, every time you kind of dip your oars in the water or your paddles in the water, you know, these heads kind of pop up, you know, and it's crocodiles all over the place, right? Mm-hmm. Occasionally a fish will jump out and whatever. And, and the trees and the canopies all around you, they're scurrying, whether it's you kind of look up at one point and you see like monkeys just kind of swinging in the trees and there's birds and and snakes, you know, and a couple of times you have to kind of like pull your paddle out of the water and like push like a a vine and you're not sure if it's a vine or a snake, but you have to push (laughs) it out of the way. Um, But you manage to kind of slow going, um, you know, kind of down the river. And so far you are able, you are going um, against the current but it's not a very it's not very steep. It seems like it's mostly level ground traveling into the interior of the island. Um, so you, you you know you're definitely actively having to paddle. Um, based on just sort of the quick surveillance and and the the supposed distance that you got from the map, you estimate it'll probably take you about two days if you were to travel this way. To get to the center of the island where supposedly the mountain and the temple is, um, but it's definitely uh-huh. by the time you have sort of paddled as far as you could go for the day, as 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 you start to see the sun set, you're deep within the jungle itself, um, and you feel like at this point you're either going to have to stop and make camp or you're going to have to sleep on the boat. <laughs> all right. Well, there's all right. Down, hmm. all sleep on the boat. No. 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 The Maybe we, we could. Uh, oh. Yeah. No. We we, we, yeah, because you'd yeah you'd, you'd have to paddle if you stayed on the boat. Uh, yeah, two of you yeah. would anyway. Okay. Oh. Well, uh, these trees. Do the trees are they like big trees? They're not like 
big yeah. trees around here? Yeah, I mean, you're in thick, dense jungle. Like, it's it, big trees, lots of vines and foliage all over the place. I mean, we should okay, probably so sleep up there on the branches. We could use some of these ropes to bring the canoe up, mm -hmm. dangle it out of the reach of those uh, big lizards. They have mighty jaws on them. But be careful. You know, that I agree. Big, the biggest of the monkeys, I think he was captain, swung around really close. He looks just like my cousin, Arn Grim One Eye. <laughs> He's a bat seed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Mm. Uh, um, so, so we'll the, make. The sun's going down. I'm, I'm thinking that we'd make yeah. use of one of the supply. Uses, oh, yes. right? Yes. To have enough rope to mm -hmm. use yeah. pat pulleys to, to bring the canoe up and to strap ourselves. We'd, we'd want to tie ourselves to the branches just in case. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to sleep up there. Yeah. All right. Can I, can, can Salazar climb up above the canopy of the jungle or get as high up as he can to see uh, the mountain? Yes. Um, I'm actually though gonna have you make a climbing check, uh, climbing skill check for me because it's getting dark and it's very dense. So to kind of pick your way through, it, it is gonna take a little bit of technical skill. But I mean, you can climb very pretty well. good, I think. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we'll use your climb wall uh, skill. Yep. I'll say it's similar. Yep. Yep. yep you made yep. it. Okay. All right. No, no, I haven't made oh, it. Oh, sorry, sorry. Take it all. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. It is 65, yes. Uh, good, no problem. Okay. Okay. So. So. You managed to climb, kind of make your way, you know, take your dagger, cut some stuff out of the way. Um, climb yourself up into the canopy. Around you, you can you can sort of feel and see these little you know chimpanzees kind of choo, 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 you know all around you. Um, a couple of birds scatter out of the trees here, and as you kind of make your way up to the mm -hmm. canopy, um, you peek your head up over, and it's for a moment, um, it's almost like you're blinded because the the sun is setting and it's just at that level where it's very it's very red. And like right at your eye level and, right. and it was dark under the canopy but you look out and you can see that you know kind of the interior of the island and you can definitely see protruding out of the canopy is this um this mountain and actually you can see that the mountain has these like plateaus um with what looks to be hmm. maybe at one point a set of of stone stairways or some kind of stone architecture that doesn't look naturally formed um it's all broken down at this point but you can you can see that potentially if you were to continue heading on your course up this river you will make it to to those cliffs all right okay so uh, i'll climb back down Callus, give us any information as to what the war to start to get into this temple or you say like the, the, the wards or, or, or whatever's guarding it? Is that what you said? Just, just the guardian, right? Yeah, it, really they didn't have any knowledge. The, the people that gave them the map just said that the island itself is very dangerous and that they didn't make it all the way there. But supposedly the lore says that there are natural guardians um, of this place, uh, but that they, they possess powers... Um, of some kind that whether they were given those by the gods or the forces of nature and you don't know but they are a formidable guardian if you are not deemed worthy right okay well mm. what do you guys think should we dock here and try to head up by foot or should we continue to and try to uh rough it further up the river do, do i have to Roll to climb back down? No. No. At this point, okay. I, you so kind I'm of climb back climbed down. your way. Yeah, you can make your way back down. Okay. So I'll tell them about seeing the mountain uh, along the path that we're going through with the river. So if we continue as we're going, it's a straight line. We don't have to worry about getting... A I mean, it's, it's, it's a more direct course, 
traps. We don't have to worry, worry about getting lost in the jungles. Yep, and we have fresh water. Times. And uh, we should ride yes. this river as, as far as it was. And find companionship in both water and branches. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and all we have to worry about is uh, some some crocodiles, right? <laughs> yep. Minor annoyance. <laughs> <laughs> and so you will camp up in the the canopy, up in the trees. You think for the yeah. night? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys want to keep the same watch order as you did before? Yeah, that's the easiest thing. Okay. Sure. So yeah. I think it was going to be Cassius that was on third watch. Is yeah. that right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the first two watches kind of go without much incident, although I would imagine you'd be slightly on edge just <laughs> because you're up in the canopy in this jungle <laughs> at night. Um, that's a little scary. But... Um, Cassius, as you kind of take your watch, maybe like an hour or so in, um, it, it's pretty dark in here. Like you would, you would probably have um, just a little bit of moonlight, but to be able to see anything with any kind of clarity, you would have to light a torch. I don't know if you guys had done that or or if you had kept your torches um, dampered, but you can feel and hear movement down below you and you can you can kind of feel and see the canoe kind of rocking a little bit um and you feel like something might be in the canoe okay so Hmm. Hmm. i send an alarm to the to the rest of the guys all right and uh i pretty much yell out wake up (coughs) I have no bearings or means to uh, see what's going on, but I can definitely hear something crawling about. Mm. <coughs> and you guys would you would be All able right. to tell as you wake up that there's something scurrying, something or some things scurrying about and messing around in your canoe. Oh, monkeys! Okay. Something <laughs> monkeying around in the canoe is what you can. I warned you about Arngrim. <laughs> they, they could be. <laughs> it's like Arngrim went missing five years ago. We didn't know he was here. No. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But there are is definitely things. Light? Say what? Uh, uh, Does anybody have there? any source of light? Yeah, let's light a torch. We'll strike a torch. I have some too. Torches. Yeah. All right. Yep. So you light you light a torch, and as you do so, immediately sort of like a couple of birds fly out, and you see this this like snake that was kind of creeping its way towards you guys, kind of like you know retreat a little bit. Um, yeah, and then um, mm. but you can you can kind of hold it over, and you can see in fact there are um, a couple of chimpanzees down in the in the canoe, and they look like they're they're trying to go through your supplies, and you know. Oh, yeah. All right, initiative time. I mean, you guys. Uh, yes, actually, let's do this first. Let's um, let's roll a d6 to see uh, if you guys have surprise on them. Apologies. Sorry. Five. Hmm. Oh, initiative. No, uh, let's roll a surprise round. Um, oh, if you guys want to oh, just roll, okay. yeah, roll a d6. Um, let me know what you get. Yeah, five also. Five. Ooh, six. All right, you got a one. Okay, so they rolled a six as well. However, um, Eldrazar, with the power of his brain, man, he's got this going on. So I'm going <laughs> to say you actually are able to get the jump on them. Um, as somebody lights the torch, you, you're, you know, you're quick-witted. You can act, certainly, first, but... Um, but for the rest of you, as soon as their torches light up, mm-hmm. you know they kind. Of, your torch lights up. They're like, Ooh. They're I'll try to, I'll try to frighten them so I cast uh, arcane bolt at them. Oh, okay, absolutely. Yeah. go for Eleven. it. You better not miss. Eight plus <laughs> three. No, eight plus four. Because I'm assuming they're like real close, right? So eight plus four is twelve. 
A 12, unfortunately, does not hit them, um, but it, it kind of goes streaking down. Um, so is this like a deer hide canoe, or is it a dugout canoe? I, I think it's probably like a like a wooden canoe, yeah, like a dugout wood. canoe, yeah. Um, so we can stick arrows in there as long as they're not on fire, you'll be fine. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, fire <laughs> in the jungle, yeah. you know, may or may not be such a good idea. They uh, they see this thing and they they seem a little, de- you know, perturbed at first, but they don't they don't actively become hostile. Um, you can see three of them down there. Um, they kind of look for a minute and then. Um, then they start just rummaging in the stuff again. Um, oh. So they don't seem like they're going to take any action. So certainly if you guys wish to do something about it, you can. Um, but for the time being, they don't seem, they don't feel like you're too threatening, but they're not going to go up and, and mess with you. Can we see how big they are? Like, how big are they on average? Chimps. Yeah, I mean, it's like a chimps? chimpanzee. So, you know, oh, it's like, yeah. Okay. Yep. I, I turn to Salazar and Valdar and I uh, say... Let's just jump down and throw them overboard, and uh, and deal with the situation the easy way. Boy. <laughs> why don't we just why don't we just fire our arrows? And uh, I have my sling. You know, we can do that from here. I don't want to go jumping into a uh, canoe that's hanging from ropes over a river full of crocodiles, and start <laughs> wrestling with monkeys in the middle of the night. I don't know. It sounds like kind of See, and, That's just me, though. And just here, me. That, that sounded like a great idea to me, but I mean, you know. <laughs> I only have nine intellect and wisdom. What do you expect? <laughs> it's what my character would do. I'm going to no. pass on that one. I'm gonna, I, it's what my character would do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. I'm not a genius. Yeah. So, you know, uh, if, uh, if, if, there were, if there was Grog involved, young well, ladies instead of monkeys, I'd be in with you, but for now, I agree with Salazar. I mean, keep keep in yes. mind there is the cask of of rum down there in that canoe, and in <laughs> fact, right. I'm gonna say it looks like that's one of the things they're kind of messing with. But no, they're mostly going they're mostly going uh, for the food. Um, <laughs> so yes, food. if you guys want to do that, go ahead and, and roll initiative for me, and uh, we'll uh, okay. we'll see how this goes. Four. All right. Oh boy. Four. Four. All right. So. Drew, you said you got four. Or yep. Yep. Okay. And then uh, Jose, no, no, you got. got oh, you got four. one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Drew, throw those dice up, man. Get a new set. <laughs> yeah. I am. <laughs> Immediately after we're done this. All right. <laughs> so it seems as though uh, Eldrazar seems to be the one um, taking the top of the initiative order here. Ah. Yep. Mm. No peace. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Their temperament was not so bad um, prior, but they just want your food. I mean, you know. Yeah. The guy, the guy to the left, looks like the head poor, the man who hired us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 here. Mm. You know what? I'm gonna defuse this here combat from the start. And I'm going to raise my hand, cast a sleep. Yes. I th- I was hoping that uh, you'd uh, you'd cast lightning bolt so we could go into some Peter Gabriel action here. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, All right. So they they need they need to make a save against spells, right? Uh, I believe. Mean, Sleep spells don't... used to not have a saving. Yeah, but... let me take a look. So. It may not. Uh-huh. I can't three, remember. Three hit points. I mean, three hit dice or less. They just fall asleep. Okay. Uh, <sighs> it doesn't last long, though. It's yep. only so we have to go. Yes, you are successful. Then you cast yeah. your sleep. You know, you <laughs> say the magic words and do your little hand gestures. And... 
and they they sleep, and they kind of fall asleep. Yeah. Now we must get to them. We only have a few minutes. All right, so you're gonna Pitch climb down the there river. and. Uh... Oh no! Are you gonna throw them in the river? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> hey, the crocodiles need to eat too, right? It's like... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the crocodiles will be following us everywhere. <laughs> Throw them over. <laughs> I'm just holding the torch. I'll let them do this. Oh, gross. <laughs> and yeah, as you pitch them in the water, um, you you hear the you know the the shrieks of, of monkey sounds as they're well, you know if in the water and they wake up and then you know the, the water starts to churn and you know and then there's like a a horrible you know cacophony down below as they get torn oh, apart by. God. Crocodiles and piranhas and all kinds of nasty uh, stuff. Oh my! <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> but you you manage to to save your food once again. Um, it's so funny. I like my dice never <laughs> never ever roll a one, and they've done it twice today for the wandering monster. So I'm like, it's the nice. weirdest thing. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, I love it because I'm uh, rolling the same thing, so I feel yeah. your pain. Oh, it's, not, it's no pain for me. I mean, but uh, that was a good use of your sleep uh, spell. However, um, very good use. You, because it was third watch. I don't know. You you need a full what eight hours of sleep to be able to recover spells. Is that right? Uh six. Six hours. Least, yeah. 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 So yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I'll I'll have one less spell the next day, I suppose. Yep. Yeah, so. <laughs> um, Okay, so you managed to go through the rest of the night um, without incident. The snake that was kind of coming towards you stays away from you, and you can definitely see some, like, monkeys scurrying around, um, but I think you guys are known as, like, you know, the kinslayers or whatever. You, you mm -hmm. killed their, their monkey kin, so... Um, <laughs> but they're scared of you because there's four of you, and so they stay away at least temporarily. Um, so in the morning, what I will do is uh, I got two first level spells mm -hmm. so I what I will do is not prepare protection from evil and I will prepare uh, sleep again on the remaining first level slot just just throw it out there okay <clears throat> see when, when this chimp starts throwing crap at us you are all, all gonna be jealous of my sheep <laughs> one man has to be uh, <laughs> yeah. If if it was only crap that they would be throwing at you. Um, <laughs> did I say that out loud? But, yeah. So okay, great. And so I assume you guys will kind of get down in the boat, go on the river again, do your sort of breakfast yeah. in the boat, and all that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Great. Yep. So definitely spend another day's worth of water and rations. Um, the second day's travel is fairly uneventful. I mean, again, you you can definitely see the monkeys are, are are kind of tracking you. Like they're they're going along the um you know in the they're canopy, following, following you. Yeah, and 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 so seems to be the crocodiles, although they don't seem menacing. But you get the impression that like oh these are the people that that were a source of food for us. Um, occasionally, yeah. you know, they'll they'll climb up on the bank on either side and you know, grab like a, you know, a snake or some kind of like, you know, little critter that that's running around. Um, I mean, this place is dangerous, right? You see these big snakes kind of hanging in the trees and um, you manage to, you, you start to see the river starts to widen a little bit. Um, just ever so slowly, the bank starts to widen and widen. And as you're paddling along, you manage to make it kind of out of the canopies. And, the, and for a moment, um, the, the, the canopy above kind of recedes and you come out into this large pool. Um, and if you guys are taking a look at the um, the little uh, Google presentations thing, if you're not, that's okay. It's not necessary, but uh, I do have a little bit uh -huh. of like a, a, a map thing there. And you basically come out into this lagoon kind of thing. Um, mm. And the tree cover Ooh, kind of separates. My... Yeah, and you... You can see that there's basically like three rock tiers, right? Like it, it looks like they were almost like steps up to the top <laughs> of this thing. And 
it mostly looks natural, naturally formed at this point. You you don't see any immediate um, immediate things, but uh, hmm. Let me see. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. I rolled a one. You guys are lucky. All right, Eldrazar, you actually notice um, as you're kind of looking, you can see that there. You know, obviously the the, the river kind of cuts through either side of these this sort of <laughs> canyon ravine. Um, and you happen to notice that it looks like, and it, it was almost hidden against the wall, um, but it seems like there's this little sort of inlet, and you think that that might be something, that might be some kind of um, passageway, or, or that maybe that will lead you know up the up the thing a little bit easier. Um, you could certainly mm -hmm. take your your boat in there, and you think you might be able to pull in. I cannot believe this rolled a, a one again because I, I was like, Jesus. You're, you're on a roll tonight. Everything is. I mean, I maybe I should maybe I should make you guys roll to find secret doors <laughs> instead of me. You know, I'm like, but I'll yeah, roll. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get the same result, but uh, so uh... <laughs> so you you notice that you also notice that on this this sort of cliff, um, there are like a bunch of these chimpanzees, like all kind of hanging out up there. And you notice mm -hmm. that as they're kind of moving around, like rocks and stuff will fall off. And, you know, sometimes it'll fall into the water. Sometimes it'll just like tumble down the thing. So it looks like it might be somewhat precarious footing. Um, mm. And rocks falling could definitely be a problem. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. So, uh, them. Uh... You also do yeah. notice that you could get, you could pull your boat up onto the lowest level there if you wanted to try to proceed up on foot, whether you climb or whatever. But you can go through the, the thing. Yeah. So I'll put it out. I'll say there seems to be opening there. Might as well take chances. We need to secure the boat. Uh, making our way up there seems difficult. I say let's take a look at this opening. See if there's an easier passage mm -hmm. there. I agree. Because I'm not wrong. I'm to... assuming somebody else. Yeah, the, and and this <laughs> yeah. actually this would be the time to ask who is actually who are the two people <laughs> paddling the canoe. I'm guessing uh, Cassius is steering, and I'm just adding muscle. Okay. Right. He's got those old J J shaped mm -hmm. strokes. I was a boy scout. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yep. <laughs> I actually could steer a canoe 20 years ago. I don't know if I can still. No, mm -hmm. apologies. No. 32 yes. years ago. 32 years. 30 yeah. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, mm -hmm. um, do you want Salazar to, to scout up ahead? Do you, does Salazar want to get out of the boat? Well, do you guys um, want me to go scout ahead a bit, or do you want to just but there land is a, the boat and we all go? Or there is a ledge. I can climb up. I, yeah, yes. I mean, there, there's like a ledge. Like you guys would sort of be able to pull in. Um, this map isn't like perfectly representative, but like you'd be able to like sort of pull in um, over kind of here if you're looking at the map, and you'd be able to like um, mm -hmm. like go up kind of this way and then up that right hand side, um, at least up onto this first level. Uh, yep. You realize that, like, you definitely have to climb up these rocks if you wanted to to actually scale them. Um, uh -huh. Might be right. made easier with with like, lots of handholds. Yeah, potentially. You probably wouldn't have much of a problem. Um, the rest of the guys would probably benefit from ropes and and you know pythons or grappling hooks or something. Okay. But... Or I could climb up there with a the rope and secure it. Then they could climb up. Yep. All right. All right. I wish, but I think we should still. Th yeah, and and uh, others there would have noticed that right about in in this area, about maybe a third of the way in, if you were to travel in by boat, there's a little like inlet, and uh, it's on the it's on the left hand side. You probably can't see it. Um, I don't know yeah, if there's a way that I can. Hold on, let me uh, let me do this. Yeah, are you making things on the thing? Cause I not yet. Um, oh, okay. Um, right about there. I don't know. Okay. Can, you, can you see that little square? When you, it's in the middle of the I stream. I can see a square. What, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So like right when you say there's an in the inlet square. there, yep. what, what? So meaning that okay. like he could he yeah. could sort of spot like um like a, a protrusion in, or a, a like a dip in the rock where it kind of 
goes in and he he gets the impression that you could maybe like pull your ship in there or your boat in there um mm. that might be some kind of you know thing because yeah, it doesn't look like there's any more of those throughout this it all looks pr fairly smooth yeah mm -hmm. let's take a look it's worth at least a all right so you're gonna bring the boat in there all right yeah all right cool yeah. uh, Sildar's keeping an eye on those chimps up above. keeping an eye on those chimps up above. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because there's rocks up there. Yep. And you do um, see that it looks like they're they're gonna get ready to start doing something to you, uh, Salzar. So you you if you wanted to try to take mm -hmm. some kind of action, you could. But rocks are definitely gonna start falling on you. Um, oh so, so, no. Yeah, yeah. So either you guys will. I'll need you to to try to, you know, make like something to paddle real hard to try to beat the rocks or, um, oh, no, man, I stand up yep. and I will again, uh, uh, huh. cast a, a sling spell on these. Oh, foul you're going to cast monkeys. another. Sling. Awesome. Okay. Yes. Yes. And, um, how many, what, what yeah, well, how many uh, hit dice were falling off? <laughs> it just says, Several creatures of three or fewer hit dice. Several. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So then I think that's yeah, that's perfectly fine. Um, the chimps on your side, kind of all. Yeah, they, oh, they, oh, they, they, they do have, they do have, uh, uh saves versus spells. You know, oh, they do. Okay. I'm sorry. No, yeah, that's okay. Further down. Yeah, it's uh. uh they did. I choose a spot, and within thirty feet of the chosen point, yep. uh, they roll. <laughs> yep, they didn't make it. They didn't make their save. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so they whoosh, nice. <laughs> so they fall into the water kind of all around you. And, like, as this is happening, again, same kind of thing, right? They, they wake up as they hit the water, and then yeah. it's just a feeding frenzy. And, like, you're you're frantically <laughs> oh sort of God. paddling out as the, as the you know, the crocodiles are, whoosh, you know. And then they're, like, fighting with each other. Um, nice. And, uh, yeah, I actually do need um, either – the person who is actually paddling the boat to um, make me a strength test or all of you to make a um, save versus death for me. I'll choose one oh. roll or four, whichever you want. <laughs> I'll go for the strength test if you want. All right, go for yeah, it. Yeah, so you just do a roll under in this case. Roll under. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a strength of 16 and I roll a... Nine. All right. So you manage just through sheer you know, strength to paddle out, avoiding the rocks coming, being thrown at you from the other side of the cliff, and this, like, almost this melee of crocodiles trying to fight over the food in the water, right? Um, and you manage to pull into the side, and you actually do see now um, your intuition paid off. This does appear to be some kind of constructed passage. And there's a little sort of boat, um, like you could you could pull your boat up, and there there are actually rough hewn stairs that seem to go up, um, kind of the side, this left hand side. Yeah, I light a torch as we go. All right, and so now, to uh, do you want to leave the boat kind of moored down there, or do you want to try to? I mean, there the way that you guys have heard it there is then another big sort of lake up at the top of this thing and that's where the and it goes down a waterfall so there is water up there but do you guys want to well, travel on foot or try to carry that I, boat up i don't know if we should carry it up but we should probably pull it from the water just in case yep. and protect it mm -hmm. hide it under some of those yeah you bushes. can definitely pull it from the water up onto like the little stone um ledge, whatever, yeah, ledge yeah. or something yeah. if we need it we can fetch it i guess Yep. Yeah. Well, this is like How the deadliest river yeah, ever. You I only love. have like one more day travel. <laughs> one yeah. more day's travel to the uh, mm -hmm. the the mount. Yep. Yeah, and you you kind of the fact that well, apparently right, but going up this stair, who knows how much time this might save you? So, uh, if you had taken the river mm -hmm. or tried to scale and go up on foot, then. Mm -hmm. Right. Probably another day, yeah. Okay. So why don't we could we maybe just pack up on on as much food as we can carry? Yeah. Leave the water behind because we have fresh water all around us, really. 
Yes. Yeah, we shouldn't just drink the water mm -hmm. anywhere, though, because the order did warn us about uh, some different eating. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, um, anytime you want to dip your water skins in the water, I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll just do that. <laughs> You'll find out if it was a good idea right. or a bad idea real quick, but, uh. Yeah. Um, We'll See that, that 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 right there says a lot. We're gonna we'd find out real quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Eldazar, what do you think? Uh, I think for now we should take. Uh, uh, I agree. Provision care and uh, some water. Uh, we don't know how long it'll take us there. And even if it is quick, uh, we are leaving. Um, might they might be monkeys might come back while we're gone. So carry as much as you can. Um, mhm. Mm I agree. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Let's load up food. So you we guys. If we have ropes and stuff, we should try to maybe secure, like the crates, like maybe as difficult into as possible. You know what I mean? Like maybe uh -huh. wrap ropes around the yep. chest or something, and you know, yeah, those supplies to secure them because we're we're there for three days, and when we come back, all our food is gone. It's gonna be getting back. <laughs> True. True. Yeah. Okay. Grand idea, wizard. Right. <laughs> and if you do discover immortal life, an immortal life starving is no life to live, is it? So. Doesn't sound. Yeah. Sound good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never more shall I. But I hear monkey meat is very good, so you know. You yes. uh, allegedly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could be for sure. Um, Chill the monkey brains. <laughs> so you kind of secure as best you can with the ropes and everything, kind of uh -huh. uh, all the gear in there. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Um, yep. And as you kind of finish that, and you 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 know you're holding your torch and you're staring up the stairs, you know you get the impression that this um, really just is a is a passage up to the top of this thing. Um, that it doesn't seem like it goes into the mountain any further. Um, and in fact, as you walk along a little bit, um, you can see the light from the top. So it's not a, a hard journey up there, but it will it will save you potentially a lot of headache um, getting through here. As you get up to the top, um, Eldrazar, you immediately start detecting some sort of magical presence up here. Um, and it, and it seems it seems like it's not everywhere. It's it's kind of like on the ground and in certain patches. You notice these magical sort of forces. Um, and as you go over to them, you you realize that there are these like herbs that are giving off this sort of magical aura. Mm. Um, and because I I believe detect magic should be an innate ability. I I did that sure. for the wizard. Sure. Um, so you're detecting these these magical things and you you would realize that if you were to cut these herbs they probably have some kind of um magical properties you're not sure yet what they are but yeah this was this was part of the things that was discussed by yeah yeah and so society right? exactly and yeah and so magical magical herbs that that would would help sustain and and possibly um cure so so what these actually do um these are effectively they work like healing potions they would fully restore your hit points um uh -huh. one, one time and there's there okay. you find two um of these herbs so you so you potentially have two effectively healing potions okay. um, yeah and then you also find one other thing up here um Again, giving off this magic. You guys would all notice this, though, because it, it sort of stands out. On the top, the plateau of this thing is these, like, it seems almost like a field of, of like, these reddish kind of crystals that are coming out of the ground. Um, 
sort oh. of naturally forming and and uh, these are definitely um, Eldrazar. These are definitely giving off magic as well. Mm-hmm. These, um, as you kind of get closer to them, they almost feel not physically, but like with your attunement to magic, they they kind of feel hot in that way. So you get the mm-hmm. idea that this might be something to do with like fire or um, or, or heat magic of some kind. Um, and you could potentially pop one of these gems out. You see that there's a, a loose kind of one. Um, so you could you could certainly do that so, if you wish to. Yeah, so I'll tell them, uh, careful. Uh, these crystals, uh, there seems to be some elemental fire uh, in them. I will try to pry one out. Yeah, you, you uh, wouldn't have careful. any problem if you have like a dagger or whatever, you kind of pop it out um yeah. and if you if you want to make um an intelligence test for me again you just roll under um to see if you can kind of identify what this is yeah on the dot 14 nice. yeah <laughs> all right so as you kind of probe this gem um with your senses and you kind of think back to like okay the stuff that you've read um Effectively, what these do, they, they, they do one of two things. If you were to slot them into a weapon somehow, um, they would effectively make it a magical weapon and it would do plus two fire damage. Ooh. Or you could use this as a wizard almost as like a focus. And effectively, what it would do is it would give you... Um, it wouldn't allow you to cast an additional spell per day, but it would be basically as if you had magic missile prepared. Um, nice. Only sort of flavored as fire. Oh, I love it. Yep. But it, it, it still take a slot. From yes, my... it would still it would still would require um, a spell slot, uh, but yep. it would be effectively like you've prepared a spell. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I put it. In... Beyond that, that is really all that you find of note up here. And as you kind of look across the plateau, you see that, I mean, there's a good distance. It'll probably take you um, a couple of hours, you know, several hours to be able to cross this plateau. But you do see the rest of the mountain kind of going up. And there's this giant waterfall that's cascading down into this great big lake. Um, Mm -hmm. And so within a couple of hours, you'll be able to make it there. And that will be right about just maybe an hour before sunset. Um, but you don't perceive any danger up here. In fact, all of those those chimpanzees that were on the cliffs, you realize they never went up on all the way up. They were maybe on the second level. They would not go up here. There's nothing up here um, except for the, you know, just the natural kind of stuff, yeah. So it must be totally safe up here. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> that worries me. <laughs> yes, me too. Don't let your guard down. <laughs> um, and so with that, will you travel, you know, sort of towards the temple? Yeah. Perfect. That's what we're here for. expect the temple oh, yeah. to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. As good time yep. as possible. So I will put up the third map here. And again, this is just sort of a um, a, a broad idea of what it looks like. But um, up here, Mm. you start to notice as you come into um, this area, this is much more architectural, right? Like this looks like human hands had built something here at one point. Um, And Mm -hmm. you notice flitting around this pool are these sprites, right? These little magical fairy creatures and um this they'll float over the pools here and there's this little bridge that you can see that kind of goes um across and and it looks like it leads into a passage that would lead behind the waterfall Mm -hmm. you assume that if there is a temple here that's where it would be probably him yeah yeah um now This what I need, it, what I, uh, elders are you immediately sense though, there's some strong magic here, um, and I need everybody here uh, to make a save versus spells for me. Two, yes. 
And so you can just let me know if you pass or you fail. Save versus spell. Yep. A fail. Yeah, I failed with two. Fail. So, it's like... so did I. So did everybody fail? Oh, you passed? Everybody oh, failed. look at that. All right. So, so only Cassius passed. Um, nice. Uh-oh. So everything sort of goes, you feel this like pressure behind your eyes and then all of a sudden you just start to droop and you feel so tired oh, no. and then all of a sudden you, <laughs> you fall unconscious um cassius you yeah. manage to like you feel the same pressure right but but where you see your companion starting to um to pass out you like kind of grab your head for a minute and you feel this intense pain for just a moment and you're like no and then you kind of shake it off and as this happens, um, you kind of see the, the sprites. There's three of them, and they're kind of floating around, and they're looking at you. And they, you see one of them kind of fly off towards the, the pool, and the other two are just sort of circling around this pool, and they're just waiting. You can tell that they're like, they're trying to size you up here. Um, but they, this other one is sort of heading off in another direction. It looks like it might be going somewhere. What would you like to do since you're the only conscious <laughs> person up here? I would like to. Is there any way that I can manage to try and see where the other sprite is headed towards? Yeah, it looks like it's headed um, behind the waterfall. Behind the yep, waterfall. That passage that would lead behind the waterfall. And are my senses about me to actually gather myself and analyze the situation? And maybe perhaps move? I think they would be, yeah. Where would you like to move? Uh, I would like to move to maybe a safe area and try to get the guys to the safer area. All right, as far as you can tell, the only sort of safe area was the way back. So you could try to, like, grab your companions and, and pull them out of this area back onto that sort of plateau that you were on before. Uh, no, that's the easy way. Let's go the hard way. Um, I'm going to go and <laughs> I'm going to try to see, get closer to these uh, fairies. Okay. And see what their motives are, really. All right, absolutely. And so as you kind of get in closer to them, um, you see one of them. Uh, let me just see really quick here. i got to look at one thing. Oh, man. Okay, yep. All right, so you kind of come in, and they look at you, and they look at your companions, and... All right. Then uh, all of a sudden you see them them kind of doing something, and I need you to make another save versus spells for me. Uh oh, TPK, here uh -oh. we come. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I They're going to the throw one. us in the, in the water it. with the Crocs. Nope. So, in, so <laughs> you feel this, you feel this like dread uh. and this sense of major just like foreboding coming over you, and, and you, you start to feel really weak. As if like your your bones or your muscle your muscles are almost like atrophying, um, and mechanically you've just been cursed. Um, so you decrease um, your strength by four points. Um, so what would your strength be at Whoa. now with a minus four to it? Uh, six. Six? Okay. Um, you'll also have a minus four penalty on attack rolls and saves from now on. Ouch. Yep. And then, if things weren't bad enough, you see from <laughs> the other side of um, the waterfall on the opposite uh, side where you, got, where you were, but near your companions, um, this shadow figure incorporeal shadowy type thing start coming out of the sort of the foliage up here um, and it, it looks like it's coming towards you 
Okay. Okay, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm going to draw two arrows, stick them in my bow, loose them at the fairies, do the best that I can to gather myself and try to get back out towards the exit the best I can. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so I think then what I'm gonna do is um, I'll have you. If you're gonna try to shoot two arrows, God, I gotta try. I don't know if there's rules for this, so I'm gonna try to remember back to my third edition days. I think I'm gonna impose a minus two penalty on your first shot and a minus four on your second shot. Okay. But you'll get to make two shots. Uh, that's always a good. Just minus two. Get the first one with a critical hit. Oh, all oh right. yeah. And get the second one with a six. Plus six, but I get a minus one as well, so Ten? 25. Well, and you get a minus four to all of your attack rolls. Oh, right. um, but I'll say the critical hit hits them no matter what. So one of them hit. Um, so go ahead and roll your damage. Hmm. Oh, no. This is not going to go well. <laughs> four. All right. Well, the, you, it's going to be a... A beautiful Five. TPK timed to end at the projected. Yeah. <laughs> so you you do exactly you do um, take one out. You kill one of these these sprites. An arrow basically drives it right down into the you know into the ground. Um, you'll notice that where the sprites flew right across the pool of water down there, the sh the sh the shadowy thing is going around it. Um, it. It's it's traveling on the land. It doesn't seem like it wants to go anywhere near that water um, that's down in the pool there. But you you notice, too, that this one's coming for you, but it seems like there's other shadows that are coming out of that same area. Um, oh, boy. And, and one of these, <laughs> these fairies is still, or these sprites is still there. Uh, hmm. All right, and there's no signs that the guys are stirring at all. Eh? <laughs> Well, actually, with that note, um, if you guys can all make another save versus spells for me, um, not not you, Cassius, you're you're fine for now. But if you pass, you wake up. All right, nineteen. All right. No. Yeah, I don't think no. that's gonna do it, my friend. No. All right. Um, <laughs> no. Nine. No. Valdar, you yeah, Valdar, you you do manage to to spring back into consciousness, um, just as you feel this this sh sort of shadowy form moving past you, um, and as you kind of sit up a little bit and you look around, you notice these dark shadow figures coming at you. Um, it looks like there's uh, there's about four of them um, coming at you. Oh no no no! Sorry, there's only there's only two coming at you. All right, um, I'll ready my I'll get to my feet and ready sword and shield, and if I'm by uh, what's their uh, uh, Eldrazar or Salazar, I'll like jostle and kick them. Wake up! There's danger afoot. All right. Yep. So you guys managed to. Um, go, ha, each of you make one more save, but this time um, I'm gonna add plus four, so you get you get a bonus to your rolls to try to help with it. Plus four. Yes. Yeah. So that's fifteen, and that does it. Yeah. Just made it. You just made it. All right. Perfect. You guys managed yeah. to to yeah. wake up finally. Um, as you see, two of <laughs> these. The yeah. Two of these <laughs> shadowy <laughs> forms coming at you, and there's one. Um, heading towards Cassius. Um, and you guys can't see it, but I am stealing something from Index Card RPG. I'm putting a timer down on the table. So right uh -oh. now we're at four, and each round is going to tick down one, and then by the by the time it gets to one, something bad happens. Bad is going to happen. Not good. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so these shadows are... They're just walking on a lead around the water. Is that what's well, going on? So they're not walking exactly, but yes, they they Float. specifically yeah. are floating. But they're they're going on the land where you distinctly. Well, you don't remember, but everybody else remembered the or no, because the three of you fell asleep. So only um, yeah. only Cassius would have seen the sprites fly over the water. But they won't go near the water. They're they're specifically going around it. They're going around the water. Uh. On the land, it's like. And it's not like a tunnel it's not no yeah like i mean you would literally like there's a, l a little bit of a ledge but you know the, i mean you could like jump into the water if you wanted to it wouldn't like kill mm -hmm. you or be a bad fall but like 
Yeah, these things are specifically avoiding it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Okay. Are we going to uh, attack? With, are there any, any sprites to attack or? There is one sprite left, yep. So initiative? Uh. Yes, you can roll initiative. Okay. Oh, great. Six? All right. Six as well. Nice. Six, six, and two, two. Yeah. All right. Six, six, two, two. Well, you got really lucky. Um, the bad guys rolled ones. So I even used a different D6 this time, too. Doesn't matter. <laughs> that one that one is on a roll. Man. Yep. Yep. All right. Excellent. Um, so, Salazar, um, you go first because you got the highest uh, dexterity, I believe. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will get my my sling swinging and uh, let loose with a stone. All right, at, at one of the, the poor the poor sprites that did nothing to you. <laughs> they they put they put us to sleep, um, and that was that was, that was uh, ten. Sorry, uh, ten ten to hit. Mm, ten. They're little and they're fast, mm -hmm. and uh, nope, you did not hit. Yeah. Them. Goes flying. All right. Yeah. yeah thank you. Bummer. All right. Um, yep. Valdar. I might as well take a swing at one of these shadowy. A shadowy thing? All right. Go for yeah. it. All right. That's 15 plus 6, 21. Okay. If my sword does anything. As you Ooh. swing your sword, nice. right? You. you... If this was a, a corporeal thing, you would have made purchase, right? But your your yeah. blade seems to go right through it, and it does not seem to have any effect on it whatsoever. Um, uh, as uh, you feel this intense cold as the the sword is going through it, and then as soon as it comes out, you it's back to normal. Um, you don't take any damage or anything right now, but it was definitely the gods. scary. Yep. Okay. All right. Who's and, up? Who's next? Cassius, you are next. You've got one of these shadowy things coming at you, and there is a sprite near you as well. Um, how big are these sprites, roughly? Like, the size of my hand? Yeah, probably. They're they're pretty small. Could I open up my empty map case and try to capture <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's just That's do that good. as a melee attack against them. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, 14. Oh, but I got one. Do I still have the minuses? You do still have the minuses. Uh, um, yeah. With the minus four and the minus one, that's a 10. You don't manage to, to do it. And in fact, this sprite looks really angry at you now. Um, yeah. But that's okay. And so finally, Eldazar, what are you going to do? Uh, I. Kind of the water. And I open it, and I'm gonna spray it on uh, on the shadow that's uh, that I just saw uh, uh, Valdar be unsuccessful attacking. Yeah, um, and this water honestly just seems to just go right through it. Doesn't have seem to have any effect on it whatsoever. Gotcha. It was worth a shot. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> these things seem as though. Unlike those, those you know, the, the walking corpses down on the beach, these things don't seem like they have been died and risen. This is something different. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And it's uh -huh. how many shadows? Two shadows? Two shadows, yep. So there's gotcha. one shadow kind of in your area here, and then um, one heading over towards, um, towards Cassius. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well... You tried to do your thing. That didn't work so well. Um, so now they get to go. The shadow creature that is near you, um, Eldazar, is actually... You've gotten his notice for some reason. Um, it probably because <laughs> of the, the water. Uh, the sword didn't seem to phase it at all, but but for, for some reason you do. And so it's going to attempt to attack you here. Um, what is your armor class? 
11. Oh, it doesn't matter. Roll the two. All right, so you're lucky there. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Worst armor class in the game, and somehow... <laughs> yeah, I, I cannot roll dice today. It's unbelievable. All right. Um, oh, man. Poor, poor, poor Cassius. Let's see what happens this time. The shadow that's coming to, to uh -oh. you oh. Is, is coming after you. Uh, um, and what is your armor class? 13. Ooh, it, it should be it should be 15. It should be 15 because he's got the dexterity bonus and it, leather armor. Yep. All right. But either way, it's it still hits. Um, oh, you poor poor guy. You take four points of damage, and as this thing just like this necrotic force just bashes into you, and you also take one more point of strength loss. Oh my god. Oh. Um, oh. Yep. And then the sprite is gonna try to get you also. Um, let's see. <laughs> She's just got a dagger. Uh, no. She is unsuccessful. She flies in and tries to bleh, get you, but with her little with her little tiny dagger, but she does not. All right. And let's go for one more round of initiative here and see what happens. We've kicked our die, our our doom yes. die down to three. Six. All right. Five. Uh, all right. Oh yeah, look at that. Six, five, four, and three. Cool. Yeah. Alright, and Alright, so what do they get? Two. No way. Alright. <laughs> Lucky. Eldrazar. Alright. You're up so, again. Kick their asses, Eldrazar. When I see that, then I put my hand in my belt pouch, I grab the soul. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, the spell slot that I had prepared for web. And instead of web, I'm going to... Uh, actually, I'm going to go with a one for visibility. I'm going to use that instead to cast a first level magic missile. And that should give me two missiles because I'm level four. Mm -hmm. Uh... I'm gonna I'm gonna throw both at the first shadow. I don't know what what yep. the deal is at the at the one who just attacked me. Just so you. Yep. Make sure that I take it out. So uh -huh. I scream words of power and gout flame spring out. Hit that baby four. Yes. Thirteen hits, baby. Oh. Yeah. Six five two is thirteen. Okay, and so nice. you're using the sort of the fire um, magic. Magic yeah, missile. Um, yes. All right, so this is what happened. Yeah, you kind of, through this gem, you sort of focus all of this fire, and it just jets out almost as if, like, the sun was was kind of beating down through this and used it as a conduit. And it was, and this big ray shoots out. And you see for a minute this the light hits the shadow, right? And for a minute it's absorbed by the shadow and then all of a sudden it's like from the inside the shadow starts to glow with this with this orange red light and it starts to expand and expand and expand and then all of a sudden it's like in this Breaks great shards yeah, yeah yeah these like sort yeah. of shadowy shards and then it all dissipates um nice. and at yeah. that at that you actually um the other shadow now has your attention like you've you've drawn the attention <laughs> I, of these guys I, I, yeah um and so fortunately guys, Cassius, guys. this thing sort of turns around at this display of magic um and but yes well done you defeated that that shadow um mm -hmm. the, the sprite also um is kind of wheeling around too she'll she's gonna try to fly like direct path right over the water to to, to try to get you but again the the shadow is like making its way back around um but valdar you you have an opportunity to try to do something here uh what would you like to do can i do a charge attack against the sprite yes i think you can um yep go for it so uh do, well what kind of weapon do you have with i don't think you can charge with a sword i think you have to have like a spear let's see some kind of charging weapon um, Movement must be the attacker must use a spear, lance, or pole arm. Yep. Okay, so I'm just running at him and attacking. 
Okay. <laughs> it just right. means I don't get the, the damage or yeah. the armor class penalty. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not not gonna complain. All right, so <clears throat> so he right he he shouts, "Tear guide my blade!" And runs to the damn thing. Seventeen. You hit plus my bonus. <laughs> you managed to hit. Good job. And it does a six points of damage. All right, and you definitely managed to kill it as you kind of <laughs> splash. You know, cut it in half. Right in half. Yeah, <laughs> then it yeah. splats to the ground. Um, oh man. <laughs> All right. Well done. Cassius, you're up. Uh, can I just take a me turn where I just drink some water and have like a mental health moment? And like, <laughs> you certainly can. You, 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 could, um, you could also, while you're taking a you know, me time, kind of stand defensively just in case something happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. All right. No problem. You can take a me moment. And uh, <laughs> Salazar, <laughs> what would you like to do? Do you want to take a me moment uh, as well? Uh, no, I don't need a. I don't need a me moment. Um, uh, it, there's no more sprites. Nope. No, no more, more sprites, sprites. Just one of these shadow things left. Yes. All right. Uh, well, I've I've seen what Eldazar can do with uh, with his magics. Uh, I, I don't think I have anything to add to this. Uh, so I will just uh, just watch his back, watch Val Valdar's back. Okay. Well then, Valdar, Eldrazar, Cassius, you guys, um, you guys kind of actually, sorry, the rest of you, Eldrazar, you watch as this shadow creature c tries to come for you. Um, he's uh -huh. definitely going to try to attack you and see if he yeah. can if he can do anything to you here. Um, oh yes, he does. He manages to hit you for three three points of, of damage and one uh, point of strength loss. As you feel uh. that, that necrotic, that cold necrotic pain just seep, seeping into you. Um, uh. Yeah, and, and it hurts. <laughs> we, uh, we tick the, time, the death timer down to two. Um, nice. And... Uh, <laughs> At this point, you have one shadow left. It seems as though right now that's the only threat for you guys, um, and it, it does seem that your your weapons are ineffective against this thing. Um, yeah. If you want to all sort of stay your turn and see if the wizard can can take can do anything against this, you could do that. Unless, do you have another plan that you might want to enact right now? I'll tell him run inside. Get inside the temple. You want to go inside the temple? Make a run for it. Or, or just run away. <laughs> we know for sure that we can get inside the temple, though. Well, the, the shadow will come back after you. If it gets me in it. Well, I was thinking of lighting a torch, seeing if fire will. Oh. Maybe yeah, will, maybe can you, won't. Can you yeah, cast that? Okay. Uh, that fire magic missile again? Yeah. One more time. <laughs> oh, then. Yeah. Go for it and see if you, uh, if you can do that. Uh, right, so we, do we roll initiative? Or, oh, no, they're no, just no. waiting, no, to, no, see yeah, they're waiting to see what happens. Yeah, they're waiting to see what happens, yeah. Okay, so there it goes. To, 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 again, I focus the, the magic yeah. through the gem. Kill it and with fire. fire shootouts and thus five plus three is eight plus two is ten. Oh my gosh, that's enough to, to take it out yes. as well. Nice. Yep. Yes. So as this fire yes. again, same same sort of effect, right? Lances into it, gets absorbed for a minute, and then you know, kind of blows it up from the inside. Um and and sort of as that happens, you, you didn't you didn't necessarily realize it until now, but it seems as though the sun seems to be shining a little bit brighter here. Um, the it, almost as if a, a, a pall or a shadow kind of was cast on this area, and now uh, kind of as you are reveling in your victory, right? Your shadows are gone. Your survival, <laughs> yes. You you hear kind of from. Um, within within the temple itself, you hear some some movement, some footsteps, and um, from outside, you know, coming out of the temple, you see eight 
humanoid creatures holding spears. They look like warriors. These They have long pointy ears. These are elves. These are essentially elves that you would have seen back home, only these are a very savage and kind of um, yeah, primal type mm-hmm. elves, you know, covered in tattoos, wearing these, um, you know, very sort of... Uh, they look like skins and, and, and leaves of the different, you know, things here. Very, they look like they probably live here. Um, and one of them in particular comes out, and this one is much larger, you know, both physically and taller than the rest of them. Big, just nasty kind of serrated spear and um, kind of comes up and without any fear at all, just sort of starts walking over to you. And then um, as he kind of sees you guys, he sort of whistles, he uses a or whatever, and the elves all kind of point their spears down at you, and then he kind of looks at you, and he just nods his head as if to say, come with me. And that's where the session will end for today. Ooh, <laughs> nice hip clanger. Yes. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. the elves Good stuff. seem to be some sort of guardian force, but if you survive and if you guys wish to find out what <laughs> goes beyond the the walls of that temple, uh, we could certainly schedule another session at some point. Tune oh, in awesome. next week. For Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome. Hello, cool that. that was fantastic. And that was my last yep. spell of the yeah. day. So Nice. Man, <laughs> like, yeah. you guys got really lucky. I just, oh. um, I couldn't believe it. Like, with all, finding the passage, like, literally you had to roll a one to find it. I rolled the one. Go figure. That was like such a, a bypass area because, like, if you had gone through, if you had if you had had to climb up, uh, probably because you had all that climbing gear, you would have. Um, I wouldn't have had like made you roll anything, but man, you would have just been getting like rock slides and and you know th- monkeys throwing yeah. shit at you. Yeah. And then if you had gone through the ravine, you would have had to either make um, pass like strength ability checks to 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 actually physically maneuver the canoe out of the way. Or saves, mm-hmm. um, save versus death to avoid the rocks. And if you oh. fell, I wasn't going to hit you with rocks. So you were just going to fall in the water. And uh, oh. Miles, you're gonna hit him. Th- th- then you would have gotten some, some, uh, wow. some fun melee uh, opportunities there. <laughs> so that was awesome. that one was the hyper deadly encounter. And, and, um, and you just bypassed it. I was like, man. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. I, I, you know, I, one of these things yeah. that you know, this, this really was great. This really was great because it was like heavy on story and ambience, more than anything. And and yes. I think you're you're like proving, you're like proving Jason right that the you know these rules are more than enough. Yep. For you to tell a story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If what you want is a story yeah. between the light rules and the rulings, this was a cinematographic session mm-hmm. that I played. This was yeah. A number and one. It's yes. the best, best wizard I've played in a while. So, oh, nice. it's awesome. <laughs> well, that, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, lot of fun. I really like the portrayals that you guys had of your characters. And, and you know, this is definitely more of like the style of game that I try to run. I, I don't. Um, I don't like, you know, the gritty, like, not gritty, but I don't like getting stuck in the minutia, right, of the of the rules, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't like, you know, everything is tactical, mm-hmm. you, you, all right, I can only move 30 feet, and I got to do this, and then I can, you know, then I can make this attack, and then I can use this feet, and then I can do, that. I'm like, oh, no, yeah. forget that, like, you know, yep. and, and yep. even, you know, I was thinking about it, and I was like, every time I think about running a fantasy adventure, right, like, something like this, you know, my go-to had always been 5th edition, and what had happened was I would do fifth edition and I would run it very much the same way as I ran this. And I would ignore most of the rules. <laughs> and what was weird about it to me was like running this in basic fantasy, I didn't ignore any rules. There was just enough that I could use them to do what I needed to do, but not so many yeah. that I was like, okay, I have to, you know, account for six different things on each of these character sheets because they've got all these abilities and, uh-huh. you know, it's like, blah. Um, and save versus death in this game <laughs> is the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no three death saves, you know? It's like, nope. <laughs> but, yeah. No. No. 
I've I've played like fifth edition for the last year, and I have never even had to make a death save because I've never been in that situation. I don't yeah. think we, actually we we haven't had one character die in a year. Uh, actually, we had one, but he he pretty much wanted his character to die so he could take him out of the game. Yeah, and start a new character. So we went out with him at a flat, you know, mm-hmm. with a bang. But yeah, it's just not. Yeah, it, it could be just the style of game we're playing too. You know, but uh, yeah, yeah, this is. I mean, it's uh, it's hard. Because I enjoyed it's, this. Is like it. Yeah, no, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I um, you know, I I always. I always feel a little apprehension with running sort of an OSR system because I still sometimes have it in my head that you have to run it in the what I you know think of as the OSR way, um, which I've come to realize there really is no uh-huh. such thing. Um, but you know, yeah. I, I have this idea in my head that it has to be very like you know dungeon crawly, and I was like. I want to say, and that would be the next adventure because you're actually going into the dungeon. But but I was thinking about it and I was like, all right, I want to challenge myself to see if I can run sort of an adventure um, feel, you know, that that sort of travel feel um, that I would normally do in the edition with all the skill checks and everything and just be like, let's see what we can do in basic fantasy. So, Well, it's it's completely legal because we're fourth level, so we're allowed to have will. Adventures by Mold, by Saint Mold Bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but in my in my mind, that's the way I buy the game, right? You can yeah. either play it story mode, which yep. is this, and you can play dungeon, which yeah. is fun too. But yeah. it's more board gamey, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Keep track yes. of the turns, and it's a research management component where you think hmm, maybe. We go back out because there's going to be wandering monsters on yeah. the way out maybe we'll die on the way out so right a different thing it's a different animal yeah. and you know uh-huh. yeah. you can play either you can play both it yeah. doesn't really you know well, and what was really fun for me about this adventure was that like your gear and equipment played such an important part in the story like that canoe like when i saw that on drew sheet i was like oh wow this is this is a game changer because i'm like I did not anticipate you guys initially taking a water route because that was it would have awesome. been it would have been insanely great. dumb. That was but great. like, but with a boat, it was like okay, you can. And then when you were like, yeah, can we go around the shore and see if we can find a river? I'm like, yes, you can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so that was, that great. was great. I, I really did. Yeah. I was hoping that um, one of you guys would would fall in the river and then the, somebody would have to save you, but. <laughs> <laughs> or they'd be like, "Sorry, nope." Like, not <laughs> too it. many crocodiles. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that we yep. had enough that I brought light arm and I left the chainmail and the warhorse back on the mainland. Yep. Yeah. Well, I know <laughs> yes. I, that was the other yes. thing. I was like, "Oh man, if any of them take heavy armor, I don't know. I might have. I might have." made that boat rock a little bit more just to, yeah. <laughs> just to see but cool well that was a lot of fun um thank yeah. you guys so much for playing it was it's, it's a great meeting you guys well, thank you thank you, nice way to meet anybody. Nice meeting you all too nice yeah and, uh, yeah i'll, I'll keep Let's, in touch uh, and we'll we'll figure out a, another um another session so we can delve into the temple of tranquility and see what's uh what's there Sure it thing. doesn't look. It okay. doesn't look very tranquil so far. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's a little bit of a misnomer there. You know, that's a... <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, legends have this way of of you know the right. a story is told and whether it's embellished or completely yeah. wrong, you know, you'll find out. Um, it was not quiet until uh-huh. we showed up. And then yeah. We messed up. <laughs> and and un- unfortunately, you know the the ship that you came there on is is wrecked. So, you know, we'll there might be tranquility yeah. soon enough. Yeah, you, you yeah. might you might be the new uh, the new denizens of this uh, this temple. Who knows? <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. All right. Well, yeah. thanks so much, guys. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and schedule another one. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to get uh, sort of an edited sure. version of this up on YouTube um, probably in a couple of weeks. Um, but sure. I did, I think I posted the Twitch, um, link up in the chat here. So if you want to, you know, watch it back or whatever, you certainly can. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Thank all you right. very much. Gentlemen, yes. it was great to meet you. It was a whole yes, lot of fun. It was. Nice meeting you all. 
And uh, you Americans down there, uh, enjoy the rest of your long weekend. 